we're going to be in some space. But before we do, uh, just want to say, go through a, a, a few things. Please, if you don't already follow us, please follow us. Uh, subscribe if you can. If you got that, if you got that one Amazon Prime free uh, Twitch subscription thing there, send it our way. We'd appreciate it. Um, also, we have most of our videos uploaded on WebDM Plays, so go check that out over on YouTube. It's where we have it. Arc uh, all these uh, these adventures uh, archive, both mine and the Land Between Two Rivers. Uh, so head on over for that. Also, check us out on Patreon. You get a couple of extra things a week. You can get WebDM five days a week. And that's pretty cool. Also, we have a sponsor now, Tabletop Loot. Head on over to tabletoploot.com, and you can get up to 15% off on mugs, shirts, and dice if you use the coupon code WebDM15. That is case sensitive, but it's going to be up on the screen and in the chat. So go support our sponsors, uh, and that helps support us. Uh, so anyway, before we get a, a brief uh, recap with the ship's log let's run around to all of our players see how you're doing tonight and let's uh give a little uh, introduction to your character uh starting off with you kiana kiana how's it going it's going great i am always excited to be here blasting off to the stars with this amazing crew i uh, can't wait to get back into uh the lovely game that is starwood bound and i will be playing uh e404 your favorite sweet, innocent murder bot. Uh, Warforged Barbarian, uh, trying real hard to do good, guys. But, you know, things happen. Things yeah. happen. You want to do good, you try to do good, and then things happen. Um, so let's move on over to Greg. How are you doing tonight, sir? I'm doing well. Tonight is the night. Tonight is Tuesday. I get to sit with three of my favorite people, be GM by one of my favorite people, be produced by one of my favorite people, and play one of my favorite characters, Elry Tossbottle. He's a part-time deity. He's a full-time uh, full arcane trickster rogue, and he is he may even be a part-time lover. We're not sure. We have to go back to the 80s to see if he can recoup with that song, but I know one thing. He's ready to rumble. He's got himself a pistol. And it's a laser pistol. Let's play this game. <laughs> All right. I think that he's a full-time lover. I'm pretty sure. Um, anyway, uh, moving on over to Trey. How you doing tonight, sir? Hey, what is going on? My name is Trey Murphy, and I am so happy to help represent my character, Dakul, a half-drowned monk with a penchant for smoking on the herbs and loving on four-legged rodents named Hellion. I am so excited to get started and show off my shiny swords. Just happy to be here, man. All right. I, I am happy that you are here, sir. Uh, and last but not least, uh, WebDM's communications director, Emma Lambert. Emma, how you doing? I am wonderful, Pruitt. It is very nice to be here. Um, my intern, while being insolent, has a good reminder for me. Uh, we have this show called RPGN in which we need clips for things. So please today, if you see things that you like, please clip them for us and I will flog the intern later. I am yes. playing Hildegard, Hilgard, Forge Cleric, Captain of the Dawn Rose, all around persnickety lady. I'm very glad to get started. Uh, yes, and uh, in, in that vein, do you wanna go ahead and uh, kick it off there? Uh, yes, I don't want to cut off my video. I want to do something else because we have a fancy green screen now. <laughs> All right. There we go. That's the ready room of next gen enterprise. If you didn't know. All right. <laughs> Captain's log. Nero system star date 71012.3. We're leaving the night side. After a short but productive visit, I had hoped to find Harkin, the sloppy little fucking ear that tried to kill us on the rock. But all the information indicated he might be in the in this dank little hole on the side of a volcano, where the worst sorts of people tend to be. The ship we landed next to was a dead ringer for Harkins, only his name was the Jasper and not the Harlequin's embrace. I put Ellery in charge of the investigation. He does excellent work, but I find I sleep better at night not knowing how he does it. Note for later, he still thinks Xander's dead. Gotta do more reading on delusions. Or maybe I'll just get him drunk and see what his fucking problem is. We were quickly introduced to one Benjamin took a young and nubile dish of a gnome who kissed my hand. I must admit I liked the cut of his jib, but he clearly liked the jib, jib of the Don Rose better. 
he told us Harkin had recently left and invited us to an auction, to which I accepted. If he wants my goods, will I his right back? At the auction, they had some really interesting stuff, including Harkin's gun and some kind of Neogi scanning technology that DeCool was bound and determined to have. His experience on the Death Spider was going to stay with him a lot longer than any of us wanted to, I fear. We spent a lot, but we got him. An elf bought a beautiful scale from Prod Zotha, the beast who ate the sun in the center of the Toho sphere, that I really wanted. And a painting Dekul said was alive. I, I don't know. Dekul painted her portrait later. Uh, interestingly and fantastically rich woman and her ship said the most wonderful things to me. We almost got lost the gun to a gif, who apparently has trouble keeping his dick in his pants. He left the auction shortly after Ellery Rock walked in, soaking wet, said something to him that made the poor fellow look like he'd heard the word of God, and then he ran out. Like I said, it's really best if I don't know. But Ellery learned that Harkin is indeed on his way to the Toho Sphere on a different ship, so we're heading that way. The Neogi scanning device might prove useful, though. But when we tried it the first time, Celestra started screaming about a noise in her head. I'm really hoping she'll let me biopsy your brain later and figure it out. But uh, the scanner appeared to reveal two structures on the outer end of its range. Where they are or when we'll come into contact is impossible to know. But we are armed and ready for conflict. Well done. <clears throat> so now we are caught up. And you find yourself, it's the next day, uh, still traveling in the same general direction. Um, what uh, what are you planning on doing, Captain, um, with regards to this Neogi scanning device? Do you continue to work on it, or are you just putting it to the side for now? Um, Hilda wants to uh, work with it and figure out what's going on with it. Um, okay. She has. All, she wants to understand how it works. She wants to understand how it can be helpful. And she also kind of wants to understand how she can attach it to E404 all the time. But she hasn't talked to E about that yet. <laughs> okay. Well, <laughs> Hilda will remember that, uh, that Benjamin Took uh, did say that it is not as effective like planet side because it, it senses general like life energy. So when you have a lot of it together, it's just kind of like a fuzz, you know? Yes. So it's it works better out in the the void of space where it's just, you're looking for like one dot from a ship. Uh, mm -hmm. So you do you do remember that. Well. Um, so we find we push in on uh, Hilda working on this device. Uh, I don't know, maybe in the the, the Don Rose uh, meeting room, um, the stars uh, pushing away from you in the background. And uh, who all is there while Hilda Hilda is working on this? E the cool. Because. Oh. I would most likely be by her side, for I am highly interested in this alien technology that has afflicted me. Mm -hmm. And like I said, uh, Dakul, you can actually kind of like make out these words. Like you don't know the context for like distances, like as it's marked on the scanner itself, but you do like generally know like, oh, it's intensity and that's, you know, and so you, you, you can figure out at least what the controls do, uh, but it will take some, some finagling to uh, like get the finer points of how it, how to read it, basically. Um, um, and you're so you're you're pushing forward through the the, the vastness of space. Uh, uh, what uh, what specifically uh, are you wanting to to do right now with it, uh, Hilda? To cool. Try to get it working. Figure out what happened with the, its interaction with the Dawn Rose. I I cannot lie, Hilda. I am probably more interested in finding Niyogi and where they are based at, or even finding Niyogi at all. I'm also interested in its basic functionality as well. But my number one priority is getting closer to the source of these nightmares. Cool, I understand. Um, and it's certainly a very high priority for us as well. I'm hoping that what we have found might be what you're looking for. It is hard to watch you feel that way. Yes, the intensity of the dreams is something that I am not familiar with. I have used many long minutes and hours in meditation trying to get closer to the source. I am quite hopeful, however, in all of your expertise in technology to get to the bottom of 
where did this machine or contraption has come from and how it can benefit us. Well, that's what I will try to do. Okay. So, so if you want to give me another Arcana check, um, and now that Dakul's here with you, like helping you out, you can, I'd say you go ahead and make an advantage since you know a little bit better um, uh, about what everything does. You know okay. Not bad. I got a 22. A 22. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you're looking through this thing and, you know, it, it just kind of hits you that like, like this thing is, is, is from a Neogi death spider, which means, and with Dakul there relating his experiences from flying the other one, uh, I mean, this thing runs on a, on a life helm. And so you did plug this thing into a spell jamming helm that runs on a life helm. And so it might work a little better if you were to figure out how to hook it up to its intended source or you could maybe work on something to like adapt it but it's gonna that's gonna take you a lot longer like adapting it to the spell jammer uh is gonna take more effort than like say trying to figure out how to hook this up to something alive to make it work i will happily donate my body to the cause just please I've already had one run in with the man of death, and I am not trying to have another. Well, let's try it. Let's try it out, yeah? Those, um, uh, through those, uh, when I was attached to the first Niyogi ship, mm -hmm. are those wounds still there? Like on my. Because they, they, they were on my, my arms and wrists, that's what, that's what I'm assuming? Uh, well, they uh, it, in, the, it inserted like in your wrist here and in right. your temple. Okay. And even though uh, I believe Hilda did magically heal you, if you look, you can still see a faint scar. Okay. So Hilda, I have an idea. I am not exactly sure if it is the smartest. When I was attached to the Niyogi, I was attached to the temples and that's to my wrist. Maybe if we can find a way to send a signal or a connection between me and the device, we can get a better understanding. That sounds like a pretty good idea, Nicole. Hilda instantly takes out a some length of copper wire mm -hmm. and perhaps too easily and quickly wraps it around your head in a way that's a little bit too tight. Um, and <laughs> then... Uh, and then makes the connection in the other spot. Um, this might might hurt a little bit to cool, but hopefully not like too much. Just like, oh, it's gonna hurt some. Hold on before we start with the pain. And that's when the cool, as he typically does in these type of situations, pulls out his J, mm -hmm. rolls up a nice one, takes a deep one as if the dentist is about to say, are you ready to get the tooth pulled? And looks Hilda dead in her eyes. Hey. I think I'm ready. Okay. Uh, so go ahead and give me... Uh, give me a smithing roll, because you're hooking up this to a to a kind of a device, uh, but modified by your intelligence. Okay. That is... Not much better. Um, that's a 17. 17 okay you you hook it up you hook the cool up to this this contraption and you click the button um the cool give me a, a constitution saving throw seven okay so um yeah you're gonna take seven psychic damage as uh like just electricity electricity shoots up your hands uh, and up into your temp, your the, the crown of your your skull and back down again. Hilda, the mach the machine itself like powers up. Um, the the control panel uh, looks a, a slightly different hue than it did before, and the the the, pan the, the actual screen itself uh, before it was kind of like a purplish. Now it's now it's more of a solid blue. There's still that blue dot kind of at the center, um, uh, which you're assuming that's you. Uh, and so now there's still a, a dot like at the at the extreme edge of the range, 
And as you're watching, you see one that's kind of in between the you and, and that dot at the edge. You see a dot kind of in the center, slowly fading, and you see it just kind of like wink out. And so it was only there for like a second. Uh, and you get all this like in about a second, and then Dakul like falls over uh, and like passes out. And then the, the machine powers back down. Oh my. Um, I will tr- attempt to catch Dakul. Okay. <laughs> And and so you 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 attempt to catch the cool, um, and manage to rest him on the ground. Uh, while while they are doing this, uh, Elry and E, what what are you up to on the on the dawn roads as it's hurtling through space? Uh, Elry's just at the front of the boat because that's his lucky place. And he's just sitting there at the front of the boat watching as he's looking through the translucent rose sails of the Dawn Rose and watching the, the stars and nebula as they swing by. He is uninterested in the uh, hooking up the scanner. He is of the mind that whatever will find them will find them and whatever they find, they will find. Okay. And uh, if, e- if E404 is there, uh, he would have them beside him as he shows the front of the ship and all of its wonders. This is a very lucky place, E-404. Very lucky. Why do you say that? Because the last time I stood here, E-404, I had sex about 30 to 35 seconds later. He is silent for a second. <laughs> I do not think I needed to know that, Elry. I want you to know everything about me, E-404. You're my best friend, and quite frankly, you're the only one I can trust to carry my chronicles to the next generation. They're going to need to know all about me. All about us, really. Mostly me. But I'm thinking about getting a plaque. And I'm going to put it right here. And he shows the railing. I'm going to put a bronze plaque and I'm going to affix it right here. And it's going to say Elry's lucky spot. What do you think? That would depend on whether Hilda would be okay with that. I'm not going to ask Hilda. It is. We could just do it. Have you ever done anything and not told Hilda about it before? He actually had to take a a second to think. Uh, I took a clipping from someone's garden at one point, and I did not tell Hilda about that. Well, see, you're, 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 you're practically a brigand. I tell you what, let me see your let me see your finger, E404. Can I see your finger? Yeah. He, he reached way up trying to grab the finger. Okay. He take, will lean down the two. Okay, take it here. Um, and he will manipulate the finger until he can get the nail or whatever constitutes a nail or a sharp edge, and he will dig it along the railing and take just a slight rut of the wood, kind of curl it up a bit. He brushes off the curl and leaving just a slight lighter mark as the exposed wood underneath is uh, less stained by wear or uh, man-made fabrication and looks up at E-404. Now, the trick is this was done by your hand, E-404. This was not some mere flower in some garden in some nameless plot of dirt. This is, as you say, Captain Hilda's boat, and you have just scratched it. Now, can you go a whole day without telling her that you did so? Is this a test, Elvry? No, no, I, no one else is taking it. Let us just say that this is, this is a, a, challenge I am presenting to you. It is not a test. You cannot pass nor fail it. It is just something to see if I need you to be around when I'm affixing my brass plate 
here or I need to do it alone. All things considered, you had just told me what you were going to do anyways, so. I did not give you a time. You can't be here all the time. You know that. That is fair. It would be quite improbable for me to stay in one spot for longer than an hour or so. So, that is my challenge to you, E404. We have this very, very visible scratch in the Don Rose. Wrought by your hand. Will you tell that you our manipulated? Bloody... Nope. That's not part of it. That's not part of any of that. Your hand, the edge of your fingers have created this this mar upon the flesh of the Dawn Rose. And your soul will be tasked with the idea of either keeping this a deception from your captain or telling her. And that, my dear E-404, really means nothing to me because whether or not you succeed or fail, a brass plate is going on the front of this goddamn boat. Mark my words. He <laughs> kind of stopped paying attention as you were speaking <laughs> and is looking out into uh, space. He turned back and said, there is something ahead. And Elri, as you turn and look in the far distance, it's almost like you can see a speck uh, in the far, far distance dead ahead. Um, but you've already learned in space, uh, generally that means like a ship or something. Like it's, it, you're closing in on it. But it's hard to tell exactly what it is right now. Bouncing baby Lathander. You're right. And he pulls out the pistol and he pulls out the dagger and he looks up at E404 and he said, now let's see what's ahead, but let's see if you can keep your scratch a secret. And he pads back towards the captain's quarters. <clears throat> okay. Um, captain, you are, uh, you're in there with Dekul. Uh, what as, as, uh, He's just kind of shaking off like, I mean, you're only out for like a split second, right? Like, like, you know, like you got taser or something, right? Mm -hmm. And so you're sitting there like helping to cool up um, when Elry pops open the door into the, uh, into the lounge area in the back of the Don Rose. Captain, E-404 has spotted a speck ahead. I can only begin to imagine what said spec is. Thank you, Ari. That was succinct and helpful. Um, You're welcome. <laughs> we have also noticed something here. You, you okay, Dekul? Oh. Okay. Uh, and yeah, Elry, you see Dekul like getting up off the ground with like copper wire wrapped around his head and at his wrists, and it's all running into that scanner. It's that poked inside his wrists. It's poked inside his wrists, and that's all running into this scanner on the table. Elry ignores all of that and looks only towards the half-burned blunt and looks with an accusatory look at Takul, like, how could you not call for me? And upon seeing that, he simply says, there's something outside. Perhaps you and your new smoke buddy would like to come out and see. And he turns around and walks out. I, I was, what is, I am, ew, whew, you never get accustomed to the darkness. How long was I out? Just for a second. I think it was a bad connection. We might actually need to, um, how do I say this, uh, access your arterial passageways, I think, for this maybe to work a little better. But, as Elry said, there's something out there, and we might need you conscious and not bleeding that badly. So, maybe we uh, can try this again later. Yes, I... Okay, whew, give me a moment. Okay, I... 
I'm ready. I, Eru, you was here? Oh. He was. I think he thinks we're smoke buddies, which, you know, if you want to be, I'd be totally cool with it, but you've never asked. Oh, come on now. As long as I have a pipe, you have a buddy. <laughs> okay, let me grab my stuff and let's see what the problem is. And then we can discuss this over here, blood. I'll help to cool up and give him a hug. And we'll get out there, see what's going on. You rejoin the crew. Um, and it's not, uh, it's it's another, it's going to take another like 10, 15 minutes to get close enough to actually start to see this. Um, but uh, does anybody actually have like a spyglass? Ooh. Mm. Probably not. Okay. Well, Templeton Ledbetter walks up and pulls out his spyglass <laughs> and looks down. He's like, oh. At the ship, looks like blue and white sails. Maybe FTL. Here, Captain. And he hands it over to you. All right. I take a look. I put my own little goggles down, and then I mm-hmm. look through his um, and try to see the ship. Okay. Yeah. You look through, and and sure enough, uh, you see the wreckage of of a ship. The ship is is like torn in half. The sails are floating oh, off to the side. And you think you can make out like the specks of, of, you're not sure if it's cargo, if it's bodies at this distance, but you you see the distinct blue and white of of the FTL, uh, the the fleet of the FTL. That's that's just their colors. Um, I will I will give Ledbetter back his um, his spyglass, and um, announce I believe this is going to be a recovery mission. Ledbetter for later. Figure out who scratched my ship. And yeah, uh, Ledbetter looks up and he looks down. He's like, "Ah, oh, I'll get the boys uh, working to buff that out." <clears throat> Don't like it. I think it's that Cole fighting too hard. I told him to stay on the underside of the ship. He's he's been keen on staying on the keel, but uh, they might have gotten out of hand. I don't know. I really thought we were building a trusting relationship. It's a real shame. Well, I mean, and done much else to warrant any kind of bother so maybe it's just a one-time infraction i don't think we should put him in the box or anything he'd probably break the box actually i appreciate judgment led better put on for later later we might need to build a new box but let's get ready for this right now yeah captain and you know he begins yelling like you know to the main line, just trying to get the ship to get a, get there a little bit quicker. And after another, you know, 10, 15 minutes or so, uh, no, you know, total half hour since it was spotted, uh, you pull up alongside this ship and sure enough, everybody, you can see like, it's, it is, it is, it is a nightmare for a sailor. Like, uh, it's the ship itself is, is torn completely in half and you see the bodies of, of crew members, just floating freely amongst the pile of rubble. Um, you see open crates as you pull in there. Like, looks like every crate that you can see out has been open and emptied. Um, and this, the sail, the main mast itself has been, you know, broken off completely. Um, you can make out part of the the name. You think it says wind collar on the back. Um, and, and yeah, uh, like Ledbetter, he confirms like, yeah, that's, that's the wind caller. That's uh, he kind of gets a, a like kind of sadness comes to his voice a bit. He's like, "That's I know you didn't like her, but that's Captain Sokol's ship." Sokol's ship. Yeah. Remember that haughty elf lady? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's her ship. I mean, she's the head of the FTL and the Neros fleet. She was know. one of the best pilots. Yeah. This isn't good, but she has a fast ship, but uh, it's more nimble than tough. And uh, as you can see, they came across something uh, that was a lot bigger. Doesn't Let's try there. to recover all the all the people we can. Yes, ma'am. And uh, you begin uh, operations to, to recover people. Yes. Uh, so you start pulling people in, and they've been 
everyone you pull in is has passed on. Um, you can tell like the the air pocket here is not. You, you didn't feel any kind of change really in, in your, your natural air, so it didn't add or really detract anything. Um, it still kept a loose uh, a loose air about it. Um, everybody you pull on, they have some form of stab wound, um, throats cut, a few bolts here and there. Um, closer to the ship, you can see a few ballista bolts stuck in the side of it. Um, you know, general sense of of ship to ship combat and it looks like they got rammed hard and like where like i said the ship has been ripped in half and so um after after a time you you managed to recover um 16 bodies um but captain sokol is not one of them and like i said all all of the even food stores like you know just looking through here um like everything has been taken like stripped out of the ship Who could have done something like this? Does this seem like a typical pirate attack? I don't know. I mean, they didn't leave any survivors. They took everything that wasn't nailed down. That sounds like pirates to me. I mean, how 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 firm was your data that, that Harkin was headed this way? It wasn't bad. Well, I did say you saw two blips, right? Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, something was here. Do pirates usually take captains alive? Oh, well, it doesn't hurt to have an officer of the FTL for hostage in case you need to uh, get out of a jam or make some money for ransom. I mean, more a lot more valuable alive than dead. Mm-hmm. Well, do we have room in the hold for these people? Yeah, we can. I don't, uh, you know, we need to drop them off soon. I don't want to... I don't want any kind of rot to get into our food or our stores or anything, but uh, I start to smell. That's something I can take care of in time. All right, <clears throat> I'll start. I'll start policing the bodies, wrap them up, nice and tight. Um, that way, they can at least be returned to the FTL when we're uh, exiting the Neurosphere. I mean, there'll, there'll be a patrol boat there at the portal. Do the rest of us hear this? Like, yeah, they, I mean, this... like they're on, like right on deck, like you know, as okay. they're. Um, Elry's going to ask E404 while this conversation's going on between Ledbetter and the captain. E, can you see anything else? Uh, do I see anything else, Pruitt? Could I do a perception check to see if there's anything else? Because um, this guy had to be, this other ship had to be pretty damn close. There's no change in the air. We saw the blip when we were approaching. It's got to be. Are there any, like, look for foreign bodies or anything like that, like asteroids or moons or something close? Well, you, y'all are headed towards the north end of the asteroid belt. Uh, so, I mean, in the distance, you can see the asteroids, right? I mean, it looks like, generally, it looks like maybe, uh, you know, well, Ledbetter would tell you that generally when you're heading this way, you want to go around the asteroid as opposed to try to go through it. I mean, some pilots can navigate the, the belt, but generally people try to go around it, right? And so y'all are near the north edge of the asteroid belt. Uh, and that's the general direction that y'all were headed. Um, and we know, but no, I was gonna say, but we know as, as general knowledge that if anybody has the option, they're gonna try to go northerly around the tip of the, mm-hmm. so if, if they were there, then Elry would turn to uh, the captain at this time, well, if they were here and they are going in that direction, we know where they're going to cross. We can catch them. I think you're right, Ellery. Um, thank you. I will. Who's who's piloting the ship? Is it still Celestra? Yeah, right now it is. She had just started when y'all did your first scan, um, you know, like last night, and so she's okay. still technically on. Um. Okay. Um. I think we should ask her if she can go as quickly as you can. Um, whoa, sorry. There's 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 a space cat getting up in my business. Um, I think you thought space hamsters were bad. I know space space Medea. Um, so yes, Celestra, go as fast as you can. 
if she can perform a maneuver to go faster mm -hmm. and close in. Uh, uh, she, she begins, uh, she says, yes, Captain, I, I can speed us up, no problem. If you could help, if anything you could do to help, that any assistance would be greatly appreciated. Elry starts to rub her shoulders. There, there. She starts to, you think she starts to smile. Though she would never admit it. Um. <clears throat> All right. And so you uh, begin leaving behind this wreckage. Uh, and it, hmm, excuse me, I didn't want to burp into the thing. Um, <clears throat> and begin heading uh, the, the continuing on your original path. Um, um, Hilda will assist how she can. Um, she can. Um, she can, um, I think she can assist with the ship, right? Make it work a little better in some sense. I mean, I mean yeah, if you're, if you're, you know, actively helping uh, the ship move forward as far as like trimming the sails and all that kind of stuff. Um, yes, yeah, so you can, you can assist a little bit. Okay. Um, Hmm. Yeah, he's probably on deck helping out with stuff on deck in terms of helping sales or whatever else needs to be done. Uh, in the in-between time, the crew would be looking for methods of healing for his seven psych damage that he received from his experiment with Hilda. Uh, is there a, uh, a ship's medic around? For I know Hilda is already uh, occupied. Um, I mean, there, there's, yes, uh, uh, what's his name, Bowden, or Hoban, excuse me, Hoban is, uh, you know that Elry goes to him for all the, his medicine, um, but yeah, he's, he's, he's a bit, uh, he's a bit on the naturey side, um, he's a, he's a dwarf, he walks around barefoot, he wears, you know, kind of basic, like, brown, brown robes, um, he's, he's like a hippie dwarf, like, he's got a, you know, unkempt hair that kind of comes down, same length as his beard, and he's usually he's usually talking about uh, this great tea that'll help cleanse you. Like he's he's been really trying to sell this tea, but it's his own brand, so he's an entrepreneur also. His name is Hoban. Yeah, his name is Hoban. Oh, Hoban. Okay, okay, Hoban. Like All right. Hoban Wash from. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah. Well, Darkul is definitely would love to see another fellow uh, herbalist. <laughs> So uh, yeah, he he will uh, head to uh, where he either his quarters or it's the equivalent. Uh, he's, of he's, sick bay. Yeah, he's helping uh, kind of uh, police the bodies away downstairs or down in the in the in the lower hold. Um, he's he's helping with that right now. He's like mid deck. All right, uh, Hoban, uh, I hate to disrupt you in the middle of your work. But when hey, you find, when no, you pro find, no no problem. To cool, what's going on, man? I. Me and Hilda have been experimenting on a navigation of life. I believe I have taken a bit of a tumble. I was hoping some of your special made tea could help soothe these wounds a bit. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Let me uh, let me let me brew you up some here in a minute, man. I just uh, need to put these bodies away and yes, I'll get right on it. Uh, let me help you with this. Two hands are better than one. Yeah, and since there's two of us, that means we can have four. Yeah, hey, I like the way you think. As a matter of fact, step inside my office real quick. Let us uh, have a pre-celebration to healing before we finish this difficult work. Okay, and so, uh, yeah, y'all step into your office and tea is brewed and Smoke, come, smoke comes out from under the door and you emerge. Um, uh, yeah, you heal for, you heal for seven. And, um, and you know, he's, y'all come out discussing the finer points of, of gardening um, and which, which level of, of, of mulch to uh, fertilizer to use um, to get the best yield on your crop. Uh, 
That's excellent knowledge. Uh, hopefully we can put our heads together and combine the grasses of the last place, the glowing grasses of the last place with this fine glowing oils and come up with a concoction for either some type of entertainment glowing tea or fine glowing smoke. Yeah, yeah, I, I like the way you think. We need to get on that next time we're planet side, get some good soil, because that's the key. Soil. Ah, yes. I believe we will get along just fine. Yeah, yeah, man. And y'all go back to, you know, finishing up the bodies and everything. Um, so you're, you're, you're hurtling as, as uh, fast as you can. Um, is, uh, is there anybody doing anything else to try to assist the ship? Elry's just walking around and every once in a while he'll stop at the scratch on the uh, railing and he'll just speak to whatever sailor's closest. How'd this scratch get here? It's awful. Boy, I wish we could get to the bottom of this. That's it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. And, you know, people are just kind of confused. Like, at, w at one point, I think Xander's like, I think it was Tall Jean that did that. Uh, what better? Eddie. Oh, sorry, go ahead. <laughs> I was going to say, anytime Xander speaks, uh, Elry will just pull out his one of his chains, one of his many medallions that he wears, and just kiss a different one each time and just kind of, you know, point upward. Remember, you see. <laughs> Lead better. Yeah, yeah. What do I do to make this ship faster? I feel like I'm forgetting something. Well, I mean, didn't y'all find that thing? What thing? That, that feather. It makes things go... It, it makes ships go faster. Oh, the quick feather from the birdie bit. Yeah, when 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 the monk almost bought it from that, uh, that umber hulk. Right. Right, the birdie feather. All right. What do we what do we have to do? We give it to Celestra? No, Can't no. You, you, you do it here. You just, uh... Forgot what the... You know the command word, and yeah. Oh, right. Of course I do. I'm the captain. So, she will uh, say the command word. Um, that'll be something, something yeah, avian. The, the elven word for wind. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, something like that. But almost immediately, like, a, a wind picks up behind you and rips the feather out of your hand, and it when it gets to the sails of the dawn rose the feather itself like explodes and the the, the sails begin to stretch and and you hear the the ropes creaking and as the ship lurches forward um actually everybody on board go ahead and give me a uh it's a pretty low dc but a deck save uh unless you were already sitting down or laying down um because you didn't warn anybody you were doing this uh and it it will increase your speed for up to eight hours uh, and so Ledbetter, uh, he, he, he knew you were doing it. He stands firm, you know, as the ship just kind of lurches forward a little bit. Uh, 22. 11. 11. Yeah, Elry's fine. He's up at the front. He just kind of like, you feel the ship kind of like try to go out from under you and you just grab the railing and maybe like prick your palm on the piece of wood splintered up from the scratch. This uh, is really troublesome. <laughs> I got a solid five. Uh, so, E, you were, like, walking downstairs helping, like, police the bodies, right? And, like, this thing hit right when you were almost to the bottom, and you, like, pitch forward and fall straight on your face. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I mean, like, I mean, you don't, you, yeah, you just, just straight down. It's, it's, you know, you don't take any damage from it, but you just, you fall on the, you fall, you face plant. Um, cool. A couple of people on deck fall over, but they, they write themselves and look around like, what the hell? hell is going on but the ship itself like picks up and you are you are now moving at a much a much quicker clip um and uh so you know lead better is, is pretty excited about that it's like so um captain how do you want to how do you want to do this i mean we're bigger than the uh wind caller was we got more guns than it did have but mm -hmm. uh I don't know what we're going up against, so. Well, it seems to me 
We have a bunch of projectiles and we should shoot them. And then decide what happens based on what it is. Mm -hmm. now, kind of um, hard to say. And he kind of looks around. He's like, I didn't want to, I wasn't supposed to uh, reveal this to you until we left the sphere for uh, secrecy's sake. Mm. But Don Rose has a few tricks up her sleeve. And one of them could be very beneficial right now. Which one's that? Lead better? Uh, we can um, we can kind of activate a bit of a stealth mode. It's a giant flower, lead better. What? How? How is that supposed to work? Well, um, I, I, I'm not really sure. I'm not uh, that versed in magic, but uh, somehow uh, it uh, infuses in the sails, and uh, they uh, they can darken. Ah, oh, so it kind of a kind of a chameleon flower ship petal. All oh, those elves, so tricksy. Love yeah, it. They, they, uh, they had a hand in it. Yep. So uh, if you say the word, we can go ahead and enact that, or whenever you'd like. Let's give it a little bit, not too much longer. About how long between when we saw the blip fade out and? when we actually got to the shipwreck. How long was that? What kind of interval? It was um, it was a little over, somewhere about 45 minutes. About 45 minutes? Like, yeah, right. I saw the blip and you were in there doing your thing. And then a little bit later, they, they you know, Ian mm -hmm. and Elry saw it and it was about half an hour to get there. So yeah, about 45 minutes. Um, and mm. the one that faded out, the ship you found, it was halfway between here and there. So, I mean, you think maybe now with this increased speed if if just eyeballing it mm -hmm. less you'll you can catch up to this thing in mid less than an hour okay so a lot better do we all have to be um off the deck for this work no, or can no, we still no. stay armed oh it's yeah it's it's just you'll you'll see oh i love this fucking flower okay let's do it immediately all why right. not and lead better we're going to have dinner tonight, and you're going to tell me all your secrets. All my secrets are the, uh, are the Don Roses. That's up to you. All right. Well, until tonight, then. And he kind of goes downstairs and just yells down, All right, we're going dark! And after a few minutes, um, you feel like almost like a slight thrum in the, the, the hull of the ship. And from the from the from the the ram on the ship, and moving back, you can see a, a, a tent. It's almost flowing like water, and it's this darkness that threads through the green of the front of the ship and into the petals. I mean, almost like I mean, a flower petal has has veins running through it, and you you see this darkness infuse and spread into the sails, and the dawn rose itself begins to darken and black out almost completely. And uh, and at that, um, you are running in stealth mode, as it were. It's like, Elry will turn. Go ahead. I was just going to say that Elry would turn to E404 at that point and say, E404, we're running in stealth mode. I believe that would be the technical term for it. Silent. Silent and deep. Uh, at this point, this is when Dakul would go back and make sure Hellion is with him. So he would go to his quarters and grab Hellion. Not in his bundle this time around. For the training has shown that he at times can heal. Okay. Um, so you're going to bring Hellion with you? Absolutely. I go nowhere without Hellion. Okay. Um, it's, it's, as you're, as you're pushing forward, uh, faster, faster, ever so faster. Uh, it is not long before in the, in the far distance, once again, you see a blip 
uh, a small fraction of a dot on the distance. It's it's hard to see sometimes because you're 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 approaching the asteroid field, um, and so it's kind of hard to make out at first. And then finally, you see it as it moves uh, right in front of an asteroid, and it's clearly you can see the sails of a, a rather large vessel. Um, so at this point, um, make a couple of rolls. Okay. Uh, Pruitt, we have a ballista at the front of the craft, correct? You have front corners. You have two two medium ballista on one on either side. You have two four, two aft, and then y'all got a medium catapult st- uh, installed, one four and one aft. And we have we have a like a crew for each of those, correct? Yes, the the ballista they require to fire the most efficiently. They require a crew of three on each. That's one to load, one to aim it, one to shoot it. The catapult requires four, um, so it takes a majority of the crew. If you wanted to man all of the stations, it would take almost all of your crew to do that. Okay, so would there be? Uh, is it safe to assume that there would be like a master of arms, like somebody that's in charge of all of the different crews that knows how to assign them? That is maybe uh, uh, this uh, man or woman is a. a uh, a prof- like in charge of all of the different crews of the ballista and the catapult. Uh, yes, it's safe to assume that was uh, the Hilda and, and uh, Templeton were were going through that. Um, Ledbetter is the is the quartermaster, so uh, he, okay, he's kind of in charge of the ship. But Hilda runs the ship like during combat, right? Now the master gunner himself is um, is actually Lorne. The, the dwarf that's missing four fingers they made because he's been on the Dawn Rose since it was being built. Like he's been on it the longest. He knows it inside and out. Um, you know that much about him. And so, yes, he is technically the master gunner. He has taught everyone how to use these weapons most effectively so they don't make the mistakes that he made. They don't follow in his yes. <laughs> digit loss, <laughs> right? Yes. Okay. Um, uh, Elry wants to go up to Lorne, and if E404 will go with him, he would like to take E404 with him to talk to Lorne for a second. Okay, yeah, and as like I said, as as this comes into view, Lorne is up front, furiously screaming for you know, oh, we're doing main, we're doing main, uh, main gunners here, main gunners here, backups at the back, you know, and he's he's yelling out orders. Um, but there's after a few minutes, there's a lull, and he kind of like looks over. Hey, Lorne. Toss bottle. I got a question for you. Yep, what's up? How can we shoot E-404? He kind of like looks at E. And E looks at Elry. (laughs) Don't worry about it. If we wanted to shoot E-404, I think that there's not going to be a whole lot of wind resistance, correct? Because we don't have any wind here. Um, I know we'll have air pockets. I'm not real familiar with that part of it, but I was thinking that if we could either put E404 on an existing bolt or E404 becomes the bolt, um, I could lash myself to E404, bing, bang, boom, boarding party. He's, he's begin stroking his beard, like looking at E, sizing E up. And he turns and looks at the catapult on the front. Turns back to E. It might work with the uh, with the catapult there. I'll take it. He looks at E four hundred four. That's our way in. We get close enough, they can shoot us, and we can get on there. Do you think that is a good idea, Elry? No, but it sounds like a lot of fun. You get in there, do your thing, get hot. You know, I'll sit back and kind of stick and poke and shoot, and then uh, we can save the day. And like over right? over over E's shoulder, you can see like Cole had has overheard overheard this conversation, and like his eyes are like huge, like. <laughs> you want to come with us, Cole? I. I <clears throat> Mr. Toss Bottle, I will take it as a kindness if you would shoot me at that ship. If one thing I hate, it's Haskell Hawking. He's a scourge of me ass. 
Yes, yes. He is an ass scourge of numerous people, I would assume, given how big a prick he really is. Uh, so I, I can concur with that. Yeah, let's get shot on a ship. I, I, I hope this is a great idea. Hey, let's see. Hey. Lorne, load us up. Will you be all right in the areas where there is no air pockets unless we are getting close enough to be exchanging air? He looks at Lorne. Will I? <laughs> yeah, I mean, you, you'll be okay for a couple of minutes, but I mean, if if we hit our target, I mean, you're only going to be out of uh, an air pocket for like a few seconds, right? You'll be fine. I'll be fine. We used to play a game where we'd go... At, anyway, it doesn't matter. It's like chicken, but with oxygen. Sounds delightful. We'll play it sometime. I do not think I'd be able to play. I do not require any form of oxygen. Well, then hell, we should load you up. Even if we miss, you'll be fine. And you are Let's pulling, do it. You are pulling ever closer uh, to, the, to this ship. Uh, and you can actually... St- Start to make out the sails just a bit in the distance. And the one thing that you can make out, especially if you're looking through uh, Ledbetter's eyepiece, is the distinct uh, checkered uh, red and white of the sails. Um, of a, it's, It is a Harlequin's pattern, uh, at least on the sails, for sure. Son um, of a bitch. <laughs> <clears throat> um, he, uh, through it, he's got Elry's gonna for the last thing he'll stop the cabin boy or whoever is acting as the go between, and he'll pull him aside, and he'll say, "I can't do this without my friend. Despite the fact that he smoked without me, please go tell the captain and our friend Decool that I intend to shoot myself at this goddamn boat with Cole and E four hundred four, and if he wants in on this fun." We better hurry his ass up, not stop smoking with the captain. And it's it's actually like Caster, like he's always like at Cole's side usually. <clears throat> and he's uh, uh, y- y- yes sir, I'll, I'll I'll go run and tell the captain and and to cool uh, right away, yes sir. And he scurries off. Um, a few moments later, uh, Hilda uh, Caster comes up and informs you of Elry's plan to be shot onto the ship. Alongside Cole and E-404. <laughs> Has he lost his damn mind? I don't, uh, sir, I, I really, I cannot speak to that. I, I, oh, he, I, he just seems really passionate about boarding the ship. Oh and my. He, he said he, if you would stop smoking with the captain, you could join him. Oh, Hilda, eh. Uh, Yes, we have to see what this is about. Uh, this is definitely some shenanigans. Honestly, to cool, it solves a problem that we didn't know we had. He but- is going to shoot himself into the unknown, and you're not worried? To cool, I'd be worried if he wanted to shoot himself alone. That poor little bastard will die if he has two drinks. But we go with him, he'll probably be fine. Oh my gosh. Ah, okay. I go where you go, Hilda. Let's, yes, there's no way Elric can should do this by himself. Let's, let's go. If Harkin's on that ship, I want to look him in the eye when he dies. He made me angry. Oh, Harkins will get his. I just want to make sure everybody is accounted for it after he does. Blood better. I'm figuring you and Lauren can handle all the long range stuff. I'm not really a long range person. Okay. <clears throat> okay. And it's about that. It's about that time. Um, you're closing in on on the what you almost positive are the Harlequins embrace, and it's at that moment you hear. Uh, you don't really. You, you think you hear a call of alarm from the other ship, but it definitely starts to turn. Whereas it was going on a beeline, and y'all were closing. Y'all had actually. Thanks to the Qual's token feather, or feather token, uh, you were closing pretty handily on it. Uh, it appears that it has finally spotted you uh, on your approach. 
Um, and at that, like you can kind of see the deck a little bit better, and 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 he's he's looking through his eyepiece, and he's just like, "They can outgun us, Captain. What? Uh, we shoot you on that ship. You can maybe disrupt their uh, their firing. That'd be great. great. But uh, well, how do you want me to handle? You want me to keep it a distance? You want to ram her? How do you want to do this? Is it apparent that they know we are following them? And he, and he looks, and Elry, you too. Like, you can tell this ship has seen you. I mean, they are definitely breaking and, and wheeling about um, where they were. They had been traveling as you were closing in for the past, like, half hour. From the first time you saw the spec to your, your closing in on them, they had been on a beeline, right? Heading toward right at the edge of the asteroid field, uh, just like you thought they would. Uh, and, again, the, the, the experienced sailors, like, they're like, yeah, they've seen us. There's no way they haven't. Elry's tying his hair up tighter. It's go time! Mm, go! And and at that, yeah, Lauren, he he starts ringing the bell. And he's like, all right. <clears throat> Grab your weapons. Get ready for boarding. Um, and they're winding the, the ballista into place and, and cranking the catapult back um, as the ship is barreling in. Lead better. Get as many shots off as you can. While we're still faster than them, we're more maneuverable. All right. If they um, they manage to open up on us, it might not be pretty. Give us. What do you say to cool? You seem like you can think of this shit. E, do a calculation. Ten minutes, then we board. Ten minutes would be a suitable amount of time, considering our normal tracking time for combat. Yeah, either we'll be fine, or you'll still be getting shot, and that'll mean we'll be dead. So. Sounds good to me. <laughs> all, right, all right, Captain. <clears throat> so it's just going to be the, uh, the five of you. You don't want me to send anybody with you? Well, we have anybody who's not on Ballista and not piloting the ship. You, like, look over and, like, Xander's, like, looking around because he's actually not flying right now. Xander, don't get yourself real dead. What's that? What's that, Cap? Mm. Elry has a proposal for you. And he looks suspiciously over at Elry. He's like, "Okay, what? Well, what is it?" <laughs> Captain, he's dead. He can't help us anymore. He's passed on. Perhaps I could haunt them. <laughs> like, and Xander's like, maybe I could haunt them. Looking at, at the captain like, oh, you could absolutely haunt them. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. Lauren, can you strap a ghost to a ballista bolt? Lauren. Uh, and like he like Lauren looks over and 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 he kind of like gives like Hilda and Ledbetter an eye, and you see Ledbetter like give a slight nod and he's like yeah yeah I can I could I could do that and he's like calling for a rope to be tied to the ballista uh, Elry will just creep closer to Xander and he says we'll put your soul to rest Captain you sure you need me on this mission Xander, you ever been in real combat? Uh, well, I mean, we, you know, we, we help take out that Niogi ship. I mean, I, it's, it's the reason. I mean, yeah, I've been in combat. I've led people to their to their death. So yeah. Well, Xander, that's not all it's about. I do think we need you. I mean, I'll be there for you, Captain. You will. Perhaps you will earn your life back. I have no idea. I really am not in control of this whole Ellery situation at the moment. All right, all right, Captain. I'll be there for you. How are we gonna? How are we gonna board? Oh, it's really quite simple. We're going to get into that catapult, and Lauren's gonna shoot us over there. You see, like the color, like drain from his face. 
Oh, come on, Xander. You didn't ever get up to this at college? Well, I mean, yeah, but I had Featherfall prepared. I mean, I guess I don't have to worry about that, but... Okay, I mean, we are in space, so please don't leave me if I miss. You'll be okay. For a while. I promise. Oh, oh, okay. Elri is lashing himself to E-404. Just the waist. His waist around their neck. Let's do this! Let's do it! So, so basically you look like you're in a little like baby Bjorn on your east chest? No, no, no. On her back. Oh, he's on riding her back? This. Okay. So he's yeah, like, this is like, like Yoda. You know, yeah. Like slim pickings, man. I'm riding this son of a bitch right into yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'm with you. I'm really. All right. Okay. So yes, yep. you are you are pulling you are pulling closer. Um, and <clears throat> Lauren starts calling. He's like, <clears throat> "We're almost within long range for the catapults." How uh, Captain? How long do you want to wait? They're probably going to start firing any second now. And as if the universe was listening, you see the first volleys uh, leave the back of the. Uh, Harlequin's embrace. And they are, you can tell by the trajectory of your ship to it, like it, they're gonna sail far over um, as as it has almost turned completely around and you are almost going head up at one another. The sails are quite clear, the checkered red, kind of an off-white um, of the sails are headed right at you. All right. Unless there are any objections, uh, Dekul, Elry, E, Cole, Xander, prepare for liftoff. <clears throat> All right. Who? Who? Uh, Lauren's like, who was shooting first? I and mean, we can only do two at a time. <laughs> e can feel how he <laughs> practically pointing, so E will. We're shy. Get. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and get onto the catapult. Okay. Um, so you you get onto the catapult. Uh, it fit right just into the uh, the holster or the the holder for it. Um, so here's the question: You are approaching 500 feet. Uh, as this, as you're rushing at one another, uh, do you wait until you are within normal range, or do you want to take a long distance shot? Oh, I'm feeling lucky. Okay. Aim high. Just <laughs> aim high. Get us and over the deck and in their bubble. That's what he's yelling down at the kid. Just if you're gonna miss, miss high. And then at that, like they pull the they pull the switch. <laughs> Um, and as they launch off, the last thing anybody on the deck hears is Elry say, Who scratched that? As he points back towards the, the railing as they rocket off into space. Okay. Yeah. Who scratches that? And they just disappear. Um, and E, I'm going to need you to make me a dexterity save. As you are fired off and you're like at first you look like you're about to come down like right on the front of the deck but you realize y'all are coming at each other at a pretty quick clip and you think you're gonna hit the main mast like almost up at the crow's nest like you think you're about to like hit right at the, the crossbar below the, uh, the sail just below the, the crossbar so uh, give me a deck save 17 17 okay yeah you manage you literally like hit the sail, almost hitting the actual mast of the ship, which would have hurt. But as it stands, the, sh the sails themselves actually act, act as a cushion as you like hit it in there and you begin sliding down the sails um, towards the deck of the ship. So there's that action. Um, they are going to shoot at you. Uh, the Their, yeah, their uh, catapult flies just over the sails of the Dawn Rose. Almost like you see the top of the sails almost flit a little bit um, from the from it passing by. And now we are going to roll initiative. Uh, 
I got 15. Okay. You got 15. Dirty 20. Dirty 20 for uh, Elry. Is it cool? I was, I was muted. 17. 17? <laughs> 18 for Hilda. 18 for Hilda. Cool. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then them. Okay. Okay. So. They exchange another uh, volley. So now. <clears throat> Elry. You are about. 50 feet off the deck of this ship as you are on E's back yodaing it up, sliding down the sails as E's like trying to grasp at the sails to you know, maintain some control but right now you're just kind of like Okay, uh, this is a ship Mm -hmm. Uh, this is gonna have uh, ropes lay lines, tag lines oh yeah, this is Elry's this is his jam, he's gonna tap E on the head and go, go Get him, he! And he grabs hold of the rope and swing, pushes off the mast and swings out. As soon as he gets anything in his sight, he's gonna fire his gun as he's swinging around. Okay. And yeah. You, shot. you swing around from the from the um, from the main mast to the mizzen mast. I think is the front one. Uh, I, I'm I should be better at my ship terminology. <laughs> spell jammer game. Anyway, it's hard to keep all this in here. But you swing around towards the front of the ship. And there is a, uh, a catapult at the front of the ship, and they are currently reloading it. Um, there's, again, there's four, you know how these, these crews work. There's four of them on there. A couple of them are working on cranking it and loading it, and one's aiming it, and the other one's getting ready to fire. Uh, so they are currently in the mid- midst of reloading. What are they loading? Uh, they're, I mean, they're just, they're loading, um, it looks like just like maybe some kind of like heavy metal ball. Uh, what they were firing at y'all looked like they were like just kind of like solid, solid like metal, like iron balls, um, which would you know if they hit one of your masts or the the hull, they would just tear it open. Right. Do they have different ammunition for mid and short range, like things that might explode? At a glance, you I would say you can't tell. I would say you, you know okay. you're swinging around and you look down. It looks like they're loading. You know, one of the you saw one of the projectiles fly over already. It looked like a like a small iron ball. And this looks like the, 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 just from my glance, this looks like the, the, uh, armament that's ready to fire next in the mm-hmm. sequence. Yeah. yeah. Okay, I mean, there, there's a guy putting it in there as they're cranking it back and guys like, no, 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 don't crank it so hard. You know, they're closing. And, uh, okay. He's going to shoot one of the guys cranking then. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead and, uh, give me an attack roll. 17 plus seven is a 24. 24. Um, yeah, well, I should say, uh, you go ahead and roll with advantage. They don't, like, y'all flew over. They weren't paying attention, so you are fighting, fly, ba- technically firing from, the, he's not aware of you, so you can roll, go ahead and roll it again if you want, just for the advantage roll. But I have advantage? Yeah, you have advantage. That's what I'm saying. I think it's a 12, but, so, okay, but yeah, I so hit, can. I can use, with advantage, then I get sneak attack, right? Yes, yes. Okay. I'm so happy. Um, oh, that's an eight. Uh, 12 plus. <laughs> oh, it's shitty. Five. Uh, 17. 17? Yeah, so you're like swinging around. You whip the mage lock pistol out, cock it back. <laughs> and the guy like looks up right at the, at the noise almost. Like he's the only one that really reacts. And it just takes him in the face. And he like hits the ground like and he is dead like you know he's dead before he hit the ground it's just like a smoke is coming off of this this indention in his face that that you did and you just kind of swing around to the other side of the sails and now you're kind of on the on the uh starboard port yeah port side of the ship um bonus bonus action hide Bonus action to hide. So yeah, you kind of swing up on like hide, trying to hide in the sails. I would allow that. You're a halfling. So, yeah. Yeah. Go ahead and uh, give me that roll. Fourteen plus. I think I'm up to ten now. Twenty-four. Jesus Christ. <laughs> All right. So then you just kind of tuck up 
and you're just kind of like up in the sails looking down and you can see like more crew are are flowing out from below decks on this ship. This ship is, you, you can tell, this ship is bigger than the Don Rose and there are more people on deck right now than y'all have on your ship. You know that. How many people are we looking at here? Um, just at, eyeball. It, at eyeball right now, I mean, you think you've counted at least 25. Like just people in the front, people coming around, like come filtering out. Um, and you, you can hear the sounds of activity below people screaming for like i need a better angle you know like stuff like that but it's below deck um and you can tell that their ship is starting to slowly turn as the ships are coming towards one another it is st starting to slowly turn to kind of face broadside um as as the ships close on one another so that's that's where you are at the end of yours so hilda it is now your turn great wait did we we're still on catapult right or do we make they are, it? They're currently reloading the next round. I mean, it's you, it's y'all have one four catapult and one aft, right? So you can only unless you want to try tying a rope to a ballista and hopefully it doesn't miss and just take you off into space. Uh, <laughs> but Let's... there's also the chance that it might rip your whatever out of socket, whatever's tied to it. Um, so let's do a catapult. Okay. All right, Ellery, you want to light up a blunt for the ride? Oh, I'm already two steps ahead of you. <laughs> if we're going to go, we're going to go blazing. I'm going to lash his wrist to mine with more of that copper wire. Um, and yeah, let's go. Let's do this. Okay. The last time you tied me up like this, I woke up in a cold sweat unconscious. <laughs> That's all Hilda says. She laughs perfectly. <laughs> kind of creepy. <laughs> it's a little creepy to hear to hear an old lady do that. Yes. Um, that's what she's doing. Okay. Um, yes. So uh, there's that. Do you want to cast any spells before you head out? How far away are we from the ship? Uh, Y'all are approaching like right around, you know, you're heading towards each other. By the time the ships go, because they kind of go near the same initiative, y'all will be within like short range of the catapults. Like mm -hmm. so, people like might actually hit each other. You're going to be within long range of the ballista, so that a lot more is about to start flying. Like you can see, like people uh, preparing to fire the ballista as they're they're taking the um, they got the catapult almost cocked and ready. Okay. Um. So, uh, long story short, more it's more than sixty feet. Way more yes, than 60 feet. Yes, yes, it's between All 500 right. to 250 by the end of the round. Oh, shit, then I'm definitely not doing anything else right now. Um, let's go in the capital. Okay. Yeah. So you're going to just load up your whole... Do uh, you want to hold your action? I would allow you to hold your action since... Yes, I will, would like... This I... will happen, like, they're going to fire you at the ship mm -hmm. before the end of the round. So. Yes. I would like to hold my action until I am within, like, c close personal range of people who I mean to die. Gotcha. That's what I'd like to happen. So that's what you're doing, loading up. Uh, Dakota, now, you are next. Yeah. Okay. Now, am I am I tied to Hilda? That's what that's what I thought we was what was kind of happening. Okay. So so if we're if we're pausing to the next round, am I am I in range of, of the longbow? Uh, well, if you're just tying your hand off, I would say you can't use it because you need both hands free right. to fire. Yeah, then um, yeah, then we will sit and wait together, and uh, so you hold you holding your action also before yeah. to be fired over there. Oh yes, this is okay. a great time to meditate. <laughs> okay, so you're both holding your action. It is now um, ease E four o four. It is your turn as you are now slipping down the sails. Do you want uh, do you want to try to stop yourself? Or you just want to go ahead and like go all the way to the deck. Yeah, I'm just gonna land. Uh, okay. Ho hopefully not too hard, but land. Uh, just give me a give me an acrobatics or athletics. I would say that you could strength your way through this landing, the superhero landing. Sure. Okay, that says that's thirteen. Uh, is that athletics or acrobatics? Athletics. Okay. Uh, yeah, you um, you land solid. 
but I'll say the only problem is you like your one of your feet like pushes through the deck of the ship and you like break the planks and it drops down to the deck below and you but you are you're able you don't fall over but you kind of have to like I would say you'd have to use half your movement to kind of like pull your foot out um, but you are like midship and you like literally fall within like 10 feet of like four guys that are all just like running to their stations loading crossbow bolts into into light crossbows and they just like look at you like what the hell and it looks like they're about to like you know pull up their crossbows to shoot you cool you're gonna think about Elvie's words and go into a rage Okay. So yeah, you uh, you feel the rage like filling you. Your light, your eyes going red, and for a split second in your vision, you're not on the ship anymore. You are in a factory, like these metal floors and these high pristine walls, and the sounds of machinery are hammering and thrumming in the background. And you're like, you notice and you look around, and all around you, you. Looking straight ahead, you see the back of your head and another one in front of that and another in front of that. And you look to the side and laid out in a grid pattern standing are just versions of E-404, pristine, no dents, no nothing. And you just kind of like your head just rotates around and you are in the middle of a vast uh, just room full of E-404s. And as you come back around looking you can't see any windows in this. You see a door in the distance. Uh, but as your head comes back around to look at the back of your own shiny head, you see something in the reflection. It's eyes, like many eyes. And they're all staring right at you. And you snap into rage. And there are four guys around you as your eyes go red. And the fires of, of rage fill you with heat. Termination protocol initiated. Um, first, I'm going to activate my aura, uh, okay. so that's going to immediately uh, 2.5 damage to any person within a 10-foot radius of me. Um, and then the hand transforms into their handy, handy uh -huh, warhammer as they go and try to attack one of these guys with a 16. Okay. Uh, so yeah, like I said, there were four guys all were right within 10 feet of you, and that's the range, right? Mm -hmm. Of your okay, so yeah, they all take the two damage, um, and then you run up to one of them, and sixteen hits completely. Cool. Uh, that guy takes uh, ten points of damage. Ten points. Yes. Yeah, so his face was already starting to kind of bubble and and, and and scald, and you just walk up and bring your hammer just across and cave his face in as he like crumples to the ground and drops his crossbow and the other guys are like looking at it and looking at you and they're calling like, Haskell we need help we need help and guess and guess what now that we've leveled up I have another fucking attack finally uh, as I go and attack another dude uh, with a 21, 21 uh, so that is uh, 12 points of damage 12 points you brought across cave this guy's face in. That guy's screaming for Haskell to help, and he turns back just to catch a backhand. Again, square in the face, and his face just turns concave, and he slumps to the ground. And all around you, like, everyone's eyes turn and look at you on this deck. And Elry, you see this too. There's like 20 guys up here, and they all are like, oh, shit, and they're all grabbing crossbows and pulling swords out and all of them have their eyes on E-404. Um, so that is the end of your turn, E. Next is... Uh, next is the pirates themselves. So, E, what's your AC? Uh, my AC is a 16. Okay. So the nearest... Uh, five guys let loose uh, crossbow bolts at you. Um, only three of them, though, find purchase. And uh, so you're going to take uh, you're going to take five, ten. One of them, though, was a twenty. So there's two hits and a crit. So that's five, ten, twenty damage total from these three crossbow bolts that all just like, like slam into you. Um, 
and then three more guys come up uh, to attack you with sabers, and they all miss. Shit. Okay. Uh, cool. So those three, uh, and that damage is halved. The that's damage it. is halved. And these guys that ran into your aura, is that like when they enter it, or is that just once when you use it? It's, I it's think when I activate it with activate it with my bonus action. <laughs> okay, cool, cool. I just want to make sure. Um, okay, so that's that. Um, you killed that, uh, but one of the other guys goes and finishes loading the crossbow, or the catapult, um, and it fires off, uh, and it hits the Dawn Rose. Let us see where it hits. Come on. Okay, so it hits near the front of the ship. Um, uh, taking the Dawn Rose like right below the ram and it it puts a severe um, crater in the front of the ship um, the, it doesn't stall the momentum at all but um, it, uh, it does not look pretty um, and the Harlequin's Embrace has turned enough where you then see uh, Ballista fire out from the mid deck um, of the ship, like as it turned, you could see slats opening, and two ballista like point out and fire off. Also, um, one of them hits the side of the Don Rose. It hits near the front, uh, near one of your ballista crew, um, and yeah, it it takes uh, that crew member. Uh, yeah, it's one of your one of your. Nero's four original red shirts. Uh, this ballista like takes him in the chest, and he just keeps going like out the side of the Don Rose and into space. Like um, he's just gone, um, just like that. So they all turn. And move. Okay, so that is that. Uh, it is now the Don Rose. Uh, their turn to retort. So first we're gonna do the catapult with Hilda and Daku. Um, and okay. As a as a as a bonus action, can I cast guidance on Lorne? Um I'm right there. You're right there. I will say if you want to use your ready to action to cast guidance on Lorne, I would let you. No. <laughs> Never mind. Okay. Uh, yeah, so the catapult uh, fires, uh, and it's going to be a similar thing. It looks like uh, they didn't have it pitched just right, and it, you're flying, and I'm going to need a dexterity save from, from both of you. Um, if, well, I'll say this. If both of you try to make it, you're both going to be at disadvantage, or one of you can make the dex save at normal since you're latched together. Dakul, you do it, for the love of God. I got this. So give me a deck save as you're flying um, near the rear of the ship. It looks like you're overshot a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, 12 and five is 17. 17, and yes, you managed to grab the very top of the sail as you're flying over and grab onto it. Um, you get a little rope burn. You're gonna take two damage as you kind of like grab the rope at the very end of the sail and you slide down a couple of feet, get near the end and just manage to hang on. But your, uh, your hand is a little raw. Um, and so you are now near the aft of the ship um, and you're about 30, about 30 feet off deck, maybe. Um, there are some, there is a rear catapult being loaded right now uh, down below you. So if you have uh, your ready to attack, you can make that or spell. Uh, uh, as far as everything that is behind me, it's just the catapult directly behind me. Are there any other people that are around there? Oh, that, yeah, I mean, there's four guys loading the catapult um, and then there's some other other people and they're getting crossbows and they actually, they saw y'all since y'all are pretty close to each other. They saw you fly up and over. So they're like looking around, they're reloading their crossbows and they're like, about to pull them up and shoot, but you can make one attack or one spell. Uh, I'm uh, it's four. I'm gonna save. I'm gonna save my uh, my spell for a little bit later. So I can get a little bit of a better, bigger bang for my buck. But I know the guy that's loading the catapult is about to catch these monk hands. I'm dropping down. Well, Hopefully okay, okay, wait, wait. Just so you know, 
you you held a ready to action, right? And uh -huh. so you can make like like you could make a ranged attack from where you are right now. You can't. It's, this isn't a full action. You're allowed to just do like one thing since you held ah. your action because okay. you're still going to be in the same initiative order. So you could like if you have a ranged weapon, you can like throw a dagger or a dart or something like that. Um, uh, am I from the way that you described it? Do I have enough footing to to use my longbow? Uh, I would say you could you could. Use it at disadvantage since you are still technically latched to, to Hilda. Okay, and uh, I but do you have, have to let go of the I, rope. That's the thing, and you are I, slowly coming down. I've got one. I, I still got another additional free. Oh no. Okay, I see what you're saying. So I've got one hand on a rope and the other hand holding Hilda. Yeah. So. Okay, so I got to let go of the rope and then make an attack with that, right? Yeah. Okay. Now I do have my hand crossbow that I never use, but I do have it. You could pull that out and shoot it. Okay, so let me uh, let let me let let go of the oof. I let go of the rope and we're both falling. I let go of the rope. Well, I mean, yeah, but you're gonna start falling towards the deck of the ship. All right. Oh. So uh, the the main person that that's that's going to be loading the uh, the, is the catapult is that is mm -hmm. that what's being loaded down there? Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I want to to use my my hand crossbow. Oh, shoot, eight, uh, eight, five. Is that, uh, I can't math right now. Thirteen to hit. Yeah. Okay, that hits. That hits one of the guys. Like these guys aren't. They're wearing like just clothes. Like they don't have like armor on or anything. Um, and y'all, y'all, y'all are falling, but uh, you're still off the deck. You know. All right. So that's a one d six. Ha ha! So that's eleven. Eleven damage. Then. Okay, uh, so yeah, you whip your crossbow out and you shoot this guy and it hits him like upper chest and he like hits a knee. He's still like, he's not quite dead, but he has ceased his reloading activities okay. for the moment. All right, so uh, yeah, and that's it. I, I, I'm going to be joyful. Dakulu will be quite joyful for landing the strike, but he is also going to roll himself in a manner so that Hilda falls on him instead of the, instead of the ship. Okay, and you are currently mid fall. Uh, you're like, I don't know, like 15 feet off the deck. You'll hit the ground on your next round. Okay. Okay. Do I get to go? Yeah. Are you done? You're ready to action. Yeah. Okay. Um, if we are still falling and we're gonna fall on the next one, I am going to cast a spiritual weapon next to the people who are um, loading the catapult. Cause the range on that is 60 feet. And I think we'll be okay. Um, okay. When I do that, I get to make an attack. Yes. Uh, so, out of nowhere comes a floating spectral hammer. Uh, that of Smith looks almost unimposing, other than the fact that it's fucking huge, and it's about to hit these guys. Okay. You gonna hit a fresh one? Are you gonna? What are you aiming for? The, the I am guys, aiming. The I am aiming for the. Is there a person who seems like they are, if I was to disable them, would uh, mess up using the catapult more? Like, uh, Well, Dekul already hit one guy, and he has ceased his loading activities. Okay. Um, it looks like another guy is moving up to help, but it doesn't look like there's anyone else here. Would you Were you to take out another person, you might be able to delay the loading of it. Um, <laughs> yeah. If, I mean, yes, you can hit one of the guys. Okay. I'll hit the one who's helping. That'll teach him. Okay. That'll help people. Okay. All right. Uh, that's a 15 to hit. That'll hit. Great. Uh, that's okay. There we go. And that is seven damage. Seven damage? Okay. Mm -hmm. So you hit him uh, with this. Uh, comes slamming in. It looks like spectral sparks fly off when you hit him. And he's like, oh, God, and looks up at you and just like gives you like a dirty look. Um, and uh, says some. He uses some French in your general direction. Um, and so it is now the Don Rose's turn, and they fire their ballista. Looks like they're aiming at the front of the ship. Uh, one of them hits the ship itself. Uh, Pruitt, yes, I'm going to go ahead and use Featherfall because I have my reaction still. So I'm going to have Elri cast Featherfall as soon as he sees that um, 
they're within his range because they're by the mass too. Mm -hmm. So he's going to cast it on them as they're falling. You know, if he can time it to where they're like 10 feet off the ground yep. when he hits them, but whatever it is, he's going to cast it on the cool and uh, Hilda. He doesn't want them to, to crash down. Okay. Yeah. You, uh, you cast feather fall and they begin to slowly descend. Um, okay. So that's that. Uh, So now we're back at the top of the initiative order with Elric. Okay, so uh, any sign of asshole Larkin right now? Uh, from where you are, it is, it is, you know, I mean, you know that the captain's quarters are nearly at the aft of the ship. You are between the front and the, the mid sails, right? So you, you don't have a good angle. You don't see him directly below you, right? Okay. Because you're kind of right at the top of the sails underneath the cross beam looking like you kind of peek over the front and you can see the catapult loading you look behind and you can see the midship and people scrambling around e uh they're circling her up uh but it like right now it looks like nobody has has caught sight of you you're still hidden okay so what i want to do is is there a way that i can swing down and swing through the group that is currently around e404 use the rapier and then continue my swing or do I have to, would that ground me if I did that? I mean, if you use, I would say if you used your bonus to disengage, I would let you totally swing down, attack one guy and swing through uh, un, unhindered, unmolested. Okay, yeah, that's what I, yeah, that's what, that's what I meant. Like go down, use the bonus and then just swing away. Yep. Okay, yep, so that's yep. what he is going to do, so. All right, Merle, swing away. <laughs> 12 plus seven for the rapiers 19 and then 1d4 or that's seven plus sneak attack oh that's slightly better seven plus eight 15 15 total on one of them that's in melee with e404 so one of the new guys that has just come up and uh, swung at her with their weapons okay yeah there's Correct. a guy that, that came up and he swung at her back and it like clanged off of ease armor but didn't really do anything and he totally does not see you coming and you just swing down and you you slip your rapier like right at the back of his neck and it just and he kind of like spits a little blood on E's back as he like tumbles to the ground just silently uh, and you're just like and gone as he swings by E404 even though he knows E404 can't really hear him at this point he just says I wonder if Hilda's ever going to find out about that scratch. As he goes by. <laughs> okay. Um, all right. So you 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 slip down and you you drop another one. Uh, that's all yours. So it is now Hilda's turn. Hilda, you slowly finish your descent to the ground. Um, you are basically standing adjacent to these guys loading this crossbow. Excellent. Or, about me, catapult. There's yes. three, three of them still on it, loading. They're, like, looking at you. One of them, you, uh, DeCool shot with his crossbow. He's, like, on his knee, and you have the spiritual weapon next to this other guy, and he's looking at you, too, pulling a weapon right now. So about five feet before I hit the ground, I am going to start chanting in a language that none of you have probably ever heard before. I'm going to raise my hammer very, very high, and when I get very close to the ground, I'm going to pull, like, some, like, anime, like, fallen shit Mm -hmm. and um, put my hammer down. It is uh, sparking with a bronze and fiery energy. Um, and the second that it goes down, what springs into action is a 15 foot circle full of uh, smiths of every race and type who are going about their business, uh, smithing things with their hammers only when they hit actual people, they start to radiate with radiant energy and start screaming, hopefully. Yeah. Spirit guardians. So, All you people who don't like clerics, get ready. Yeah, no, um, the, the meat grinder has been cast. So Hilda hits the ground, blooming with power as these, the, you see an, an elven, a fine elven smith hammering away an orcish smith just beating a piece of of just like raw metal um there's you know you see a dragonborn uh, looks like they're smithing like scales of a dragon into a shield and, and 
or of every, like you said, every variety. And as they're spinning around and they get to a person, like where the anvil would be, that's where the person is, and they strike home, and there's like a shower of sparks. So, um, so they need to make a witch save, I believe. It is. I got so excited, I closed out the spell. Um, they need to make. What is it? So all of their all of their speed is halved, mm -hmm. and they need to make a wisdom save DC 14, or they are going to take 21 damage because I rolled really well. Oh, dang! And it's safe for half, and it's safe for half. Okay, so as you land, um, this pure energy of creation and of the forge itself glows white hot, and just strike after strike. The elven smith comes by, the, the the dragonborn, the orc, and like one by one, these guys in the back like just begin dropping um, as as the, the the fires of creation itself begin snuffing out one life after the other. The only one that survives is the guy firing the catapult. Um, he, I'm gonna use my bonus attack to hit him with the spirit uh, spiritual weapon. Okay, go ahead and make that attack. Okay as he's hammered in the chest by this dwarven smith and just kind of coughs it off and he's like reaching for the handle as they just finished loading it. Uh, 22 to hit. That's a hit. Um, 11 damage, max. 11 damage as you bring in the hammer sideways and snap his arm as he's reaching for the, the, the firing mechanism and, and he just falls to the side. Um, and you can see like spirit the spiritual gardens is also uh beginning to work slightly on the catapult itself sweet i still have half my movement left so i'm going to go up to the next people i see uh okay um like i said you're at the aft of the ship you're on top of the uh where the captain's quarters would be um it's it's about it's about because this ship is a little bit bigger than the dawn rose so it's going to be about 15 feet to get to the top of the stairs to move down to, towards the deck. And there's no one left, like, on, on this area of the ship. Okay. We'll just keep going. Alright, so you move to the, the top of the stairs. Um, and looking around, you can see uh, in midship, there's E surrounded by surrounded by pirates. Um, there's, there's more coming up from below decks. Um, and... That's where we are. Dakul, you, uh, where you were falling and you were getting ready to pull Hilda uh, on top of you to absorb the blow, you both slow down slightly and just come to light on the ground uh, lightly. Um, only used about five feet of your movement. Okay. So you, uh, you're uh, right there and in the midst of this... Uh... Wait, does it does this affect uh, allies, right? Um... No. Okay. Mm -hmm. Cool, cool. Not not ones that I can see when I cast it. Sure, sure thing. All right. So, um, yeah. Okay, so I am on the ground, correct? Yep. And I can see I am on the aft side of the ship. Yep, you're right at the back. Uh, Hilda moved up. Uh, right or left stairs, Hilda? Yes. Always go left, Pruitt. So Hilda has moved to the left side of the... Uh, so she's gone to port. Yes. To that staircase. Um, and you landed like right next to her near the catapult. So uh, where, where are you headed? The first thing I'm going to do is evaluate the battlefield and see where my friends and foes are. Okay. Uh, so uh, based off of the conversation and the things I have seen when I was sailing in the air, I know that E404 is in a bit of some trouble, correct? Uh, you know, that's one interpretation of it, sure. So how, how far away is E404 from where I am currently standing? Uh, she is midship. The ship is a little over 120 feet long. Mm -hmm. Uh, so you're you're near the back. So it would if you wanted to get right up to her, and in and into melee with the people around, it would take um, it would take two movements, two moves, to get Whoa. there. But you could do it. I would. Uh, whew, okay. Ah, uh, but I would not be able to attack once I arrive. Would I? Well, remember you have step of the wind, so if you spend a key yes. point, you can do a dash at. I most certainly will. There, I will use step of the wind to get and help E four hundred four is with most haste. Okay, so yeah, you spend a key point. Uh, you can double move, and you're basically can move right up to the point where you're 
you've approached the, the ring of guys around E. This is exactly where I want to be. You're, you are right now at 10 feet and one inch away from her. And you can feel the heat radiating off. Uh, yes. Yes, that is, that is a very good point. I want to be just outside of her heat damage. Okay. Uh, and with the heat that is so hot, I shall take the, the remaining blunt that is behind my ear and light it off of the fire that E404 has emitted. Take a long, deep and strong pull and go deep in th- into the thoughts of meditation of my monk techniques and remember who I am and, and the fights that I had with death and push all of that emotion out of my lungs and emit very fire among everyone who can touch my sacred smoke. Okay, do you, now are you trying to avoid hitting E? That's gonna be yes. very important. Okay, so which side of E are you trying to, you can, you can catch probably like seven of these guys on one side is about the most um, you can catch in a, because it's a 20 foot uh, cube. Yes. So, um, so yeah. Uh, the, the side that has the most people on the side. Yeah, so, on one side, you can catch about seven of these guys. If you, I will happily uh, catch those seven people. Okay. So it's a deck save, right? Yes. What's the DC? 14. Okay. Uh, two of the seven pass. So five of them uh, begin to <coughs> cough a little bit and smoke kind of clings about their person while two of them kind of are managed to wave it away and it walks past them. So it looks like you caught five of these guys in fair fire. Five uh, is plenty enough. All right, so that's your move, bonus, and action. Okay, yeah. uh, next, E, it is your turn. Time to beat, poop, and murder. Right in front of you, uh, a waft of smoke has washed in front of you, and the two guys that are right in front of you have a weird smoke clinging about them. Oh, goody. Well, first I'm going to activate my rage, uh, my aura again, so okay. plus two points of damage all around. Uh, so I'm going to go for one of, that's a nat 20, <laughs> for uh, one of the guys. Uh, <laughs> uh-huh. Uh-huh. Uh, and for that guy, that is... Uh, yeah, that's like 18 points of damage there. Uh, and then for the other guy, advantage kind of thing, that is a 23 to hit, uh-huh. which is um, another eight points of damage to that guy. Okay, yeah. So in, like it has been the case since you landed, two hits. The first guy, you buried your, your war hammer. It stopped about mid rib cage like right at his sternum is where your hammer stopped and then you just kind of like don't even try to extricate it you just swing at the next guy over and just kind of throw the guy off your bo- off your hammer with and hit him with his friend and they both tumble to the deck and neither I mean the, they both don't move after that cool okay uh, next up is <clears throat> the pirates. So uh, a fresh wave uh, comes up from below deck, and you also, the cool and E, um, you can see this. Uh, Elry, where did you, you? You're still up at the front sails, right? Or yeah, I stayed on the. I'm on the main front. mast. I'm on the main mast. Um, oh, I'm so you, current, okay, you're marking main. around, right? Okay. So. I disengaged and I'm arcing, but I'm not hidden. Okay, so then that means that since you're still swinging, you can look back and see as the doors to the captain chambers like kick open. And there is, wait, is that Haskell Harkin? Like you look and you see a very finely dressed uh, gentleman, his hair pulled back in a, in a tight ponytail, fine clothes. Like you remember the guy that attacked y'all, like he was wearing like kind of grubby clothes and he had gold teeth and he had a big old par, right? And hit, like this door kicks open, and a rather handsome gentleman like strides confidently on deck, and you see him pull out a pistol, a very familiar pistol, uh, and cock it back. And in the other hand, he pulls out a very fine um, rapier, and he looks around and looks, and he looks right at Elric, and a big smile like crosses his face, 
uh, as he sees Elry. Uh, and you're not sure, like, he sees, like, a moment of recognition. Like, maybe he sees the uh, the handle of, of, of your pistol or whatever. But he, like, pulls up his uh, his pistol and fires. Um, what's your AC? I'll let you know when you... <laughs> 16. 16? <laughs> okay. Um, yeah. So a shot goes wide. You, fe- you feel the rush of, of blue energy as... It streaks past your head. Um, al- it almost clips the rope, uh, but flies into the vast nothingness. Um, and he and he begins striding forward, like, and he's calling out. Uh, he's calling out orders. Um, <sighs> Clem Vortis, do, do something about these two, would you please? <sighs> They're on my ship. And two people step out behind, from behind him. Um, both of them wearing robes. Uh, one of them looking more like some kind of arcane caster. Uh, has like a small focus in his hand. It looks like some kind of gem as he pulls up and starts muttering some arcane words. Um, Elry, you would you would recognize them as arcane. Uh, the other uh, begins muttering uh, a, a, a slow, steady prayer. Um, and I'm going to need uh, Elry, Dakul, and E. I'm going to need you to make me a wisdom save. A 13. Ooh, dirty 20. <laughs> dirty 20, okay. 18 plus one. Now, here's my question. Yeah. With luck, can I make E re-roll her? Or is it just my enemy and me? It's just your enemy and you. You can only manipulate what you're dealing with directly. Okay. Um, Okay, I'm sorry. That's my bad. I'm a bad DM. Uh, That should have been a charisma save. So, whatever you... Same roll, but... Um, it's a charisma save, not a, not a wizard. Last base, that's, that's a 12, then. Then mine's an 18. <laughs> okay. A uh, 21. Okay. All right. Um, so, E is the only one that failed. Um, you're, you have been baned. So, subtract uh, D4 from all of your attack rolls and your saving throws from now for the next uh, minute or until I tell you otherwise. Um, and then the other, the, the, the mage who's like casting, casting and he says some words and you see fire like light up and uh, to cool uh, a, uh, a bolt of flame comes streaking at you. Uh, what's your AC? 19. 19? Okay. It, uh, it slides right past you and off into the ether um, as a bolt of pure heat um, shoots past you. Uh, that's their turn. Okay. And who, who threw that at me again? That was one of the two two mages that was in front of uh, Haskell? Yeah, one of the two casters that stepped out from behind Haskell Hark, and he's kind of standing in the doorway of the, the leading back to the captain's quarters. And one, uh, one is on either side of him now, and they're both start muttering and casting. He's kind of standing there, rapier in one hand, pistol in the other. And, um... So yeah, that's 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 where it's the scene has set right now. Uh, more ballista bolts flying out. Um, two more slam into the dawn rose, uh, into the side. Um, it's it's taken a few hits. You're a little there right now. Uh, looks like the dawn rose is trying to get behind this this ship, maneuver behind it, so these ballista on each side can't target it. Um, and. Okay, and also uh, you feel you feel the the Harlequins embrace rock to the side a little bit, um, as as a ballista bolt slams into it somewhere aft near the near the rear of the ship, um, and so that's it for their exchange right now. So we are now back up to the top of the initiative order. Oh, I'm sorry. And at that round, hang on, I forgot about the the catapult. Um, Okay, it's a little too close, but they uh, barely load it just perfectly, and you hear the sound of call 
uh, screaming as he comes over and he actually like hits the main mast about 20 feet up and he's got he's like got Xander on his back and they just kind of like <clears throat> and he's like slides down um, to the uh, deck of the ship with Xander like rattled a bit but but uh, still there so top of the initiative now with Elric Okay, uh, nobody, I don't have any friends that are currently standing around the casters, correct? No. Okay. Hilda is sort of near them. She's up on the stairs, like, off to one side, and they're, you know, coming out of the, the captain's quarters. So she's near them, but she's, you know, like 20, 25 feet away. Okay, I can't, I can't get into them yet, or I will die. Um... I am going to have, I'm going to do the same thing I did before, only this time Elry's going to land on the deck. He's going to slide towards the uh, sailor that's closest to um, E404, and he is going to attack as he slides past with his rapier. Uh, six plus seven is a 13. 13 to hit. Okay. So, 13. <sighs> Two six. Oh, slightly better. Two six. 20. 20 damage to that one. Oh shit. Okay. Yeah, you you hit the deck, pop a roll, you come up and you slip your rape here like right around start in right around the kidney, and it slips up into the rib cage. Like he's about to scream and and take a swing, but you just take the air right out of him. He's like <laughs> and he slides to the ground and off your rapier. Right okay, uh, he is then going to use uh, my halfling proficiency to move through the spaces that other people occupy, and he is going to disengage, but he is going to be moving in between the enemy towards the casters and uh, the captain. Gotcha. Asshole. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay, yeah, and he's and he and he sees all this and he's like eyeing you like with a with a almost like a smile and a nod of like acknowledgement like mm, well well struck. It's uh, you and I, prick. Okay. Um so that's Elry. Hilda. Alright, so you said Hilda is twenty or twenty five feet away from Harkin and his caster cronies. Yes? Yeah, if you Walk, if you went down the stairs and around to them, it would be uh, that would take about 30 feet of movement. You technically could like jump down to the deck and kind of go as the crow flies. Well, I only flying. really need to be within 15 feet of them to do most of what I do. Um, so I'm going to go, uh, I'm just gonna go halfway down the steps. If they want to come over here, they can. Um, and I'm going to move my spiritual weapon, it is going to hit. The one that is not praying is going to hit, hit the other caster. Okay, the mage? Uh, yes, the mage. Okay. Um, does a 13 hit? 13 does not hit. It, Darn. Uh, you see it kind of like your your hammer rock over some kind of like, there's a, a like a blue uh, barrier between him and the hammer that kind of flares up a little bit. As you try to hit it, um, but his magic holds. All right. Well, still, if they are within 15 feet of me, um, then they need to save DC 14 wisdom um, or take 19 damage. Okay, uh, so if you only move 15 feet down the stairs, only the, 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 the caster on the left is more of a, you could tell they were praying, the, mm -hmm. the, the, the cleric. Uh, they're within the edge of your spirit guardian. Okay, well, I would go as far as... I, my move is 25, so I can't get right up on them. Um, right, well, I mean, the thing is, where they are, you, mm -hmm. if you went halfway... No matter where you are on the stairs, you're still only going to be... That's the only Getting guy one. He's on the far left, right? So you'd have okay. to be physically closer to them. Um, okay. Um, in that case, then, I will get a little bit closer. I'll do my move 25 feet. <laughs> um, okay, you can... Okay, in that case, you can get down... Like I said, you can run down to the end of the stairs and come back up just a little bit. And you could get the caster or the the, the cleric and Harkin. Okay. DC fourteen, wisdom. Okay. It looks like the caster failed. Nineteen radiant damage as the 
celestial clerics who do not care about them hit them as part of their work because we are all part of the forge. Okay. Um, gotcha. So you you hit this uh, you hit this guy and he as this the hammer comes along and just slaps him across the face uh, as it travels by and there's a scorch mark on his on his beard uh, his light growth of beard. Um, all right. Um, action move. Okay. So that's the end of your action. Yes. Be cool. Yes, I would like to evaluate the battlefield from where I am standing. Okay. Uh, well, E dropped two of the guys that were lit up by the fairy fire. Okay? Yes. So there are three more that are still lit up. Uh, and then there are two more on deck that are... So there's still five midship that are kind of fighting with y'all, right? Right. And then there's still the crew at the top, at the front of the ship. There's four members up there reloading the catapult. Um, and that's all you see on deck right now. Okay, and Haskell is far too far from me, right? Correct? Um, he is... A, yeah, well, he's a little over... No, he is a move action away. Like, he's at the rear of... He just came out of the captain's quarters, but it's him and two casters side by side. Um, okay. Uh, and where is Elry in, in regards to all of this? Uh, you hear him like hooting and hollering above you. Um, and you're pretty oh, sure. Actually, you- yeah, I'm on the ground oh, now. I'm head. That's right. I'm, I'm, I'm weaving through towards uh, the casters and uh, the captain. Well, then you see Elry weaving between some guys. Um, Looks like he's heading towards, uh, yeah. Okay, so the only way that I can get close to Haskell and his two minions is to use Step of the Wind again, correct? No, no, no. He's about to move action away. So, oh, oh. Remember, you were at the back, at the very back of the ship, so you had to move yes. all the way down the stairs and then get to midship. So now you're at midship and you can get to right at the base of the stairs, basically where they are. So okay. yeah, you can get there in one move. Because also you're like 35 feet, right? Yes. No yeah, yeah. You can totally get to him. You can you can get to any of the three. Okay. I believe you four four can handle the rest of these wounded soldiers uh, without taking too much damage. So I am going to move towards Haskell and his two minions with haste. I would like to make my movement there. Okay. To uh uh yeah actually to straight to Haskell and I want to use stunning strike. Okay. So you're going to move straight up to Haskell, and you're going to try to use Stunning Strike. So That's his correct. Give me an attack. Ah, 17. I'm stuck uh, on 17. Uh, 17? Okay. So you going in with the sword? You going with a punch? How are you? Oh, doing? no, no. This is sword work, right? Oh, actually, I'm sorry. I'm going in with the punch. Excuse me. Yes. I'm going in with, 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 a, with a punch so that uh, I can have a... Uh, Plus two to my armor class front and armor attack. Okay, yeah, for for going one of your sword attacks, totally. So you go in to punch him, and you're like, he's like leaving an opening right there. It's almost like he doesn't see you, and at the last second, he whips his rapier up and slaps your wrist away right as it was about to make contact with his chest. Okay. Uh, I still get my 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 uh, my defense bonus, even though this is a missed attacks, correct? Yeah, yeah, and you still have your other attacks. It's just he he he, he had a he has a parry ability, um, and so he. All right. Used it. All right. So with my with my second attack, mm-hmm. uh, I can I can only use stunning strike once per attack, right? Or is it? Yeah, per attack. You yeah. have another attack. You can right. try to stunning strike him again. Yes, I'm gonna try one more time. <laughs> So that'll be my third key point. Okay. Uh, 18, one better. <laughs> uh, 18, that will hit. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, man. All right. Uh, so this this is an unarmed attack. Uh, no, no, well, excuse me. This is a sword attack, excuse me. Since I've already done the, the first one was an unarmed attack. This okay. attack is going to be a sword attack. Okay. Oh, and so uh, I need to make a wisdom save or is it a constitution save? It is a uh, wisdom. And what's your what's your DC? I am so sorry. That's okay. It's going to be eight plus your wisdom bonus plus your proficiency bonus. Uh, 
plus three, uh, 11 plus whatever your wisdom bonus is. 12, uh, 15. 15? Did okay. you quick math? <laughs> yeah, you, uh, you, you pop him um, with your sword trying to stun him and he, <laughs> better luck next time, old chap. And he like shakes it off. Um, you still have your bonus action. Okay, and with that bonus action is, uh, is, is another unarmed attack. Okay. Um, so, um, yeah, uh, let, let, let me try and use some of these elbows and see what they want. <laughs> 15. Uh, 15 does not hit. Yes, I know. Oh, I am sorry, team. Oh, that's all good. Okay, so that is the end of your turn. Uh, so, to cool. so now that is E, E404. Okay, uh, how many are close to me right now? Because I'm assuming that um, the cool is all up in there. Same with Elry. I should probably deal with these people who are directly in my vicinity. So how many are still up? Whew. Uh, there's five guys in your vicinity. Um, three of them are moving into melee. Two of them are loading crossbows again. Um, but they are okay. all technically within 10 feet of you. Cool. Uh, yeah, so... F uh, fiery damage again, and let's do this. Uh, are these fairy fired as well? Uh, uh, the ones in melee? Yes, t uh, yes, actually, all three of them in melee are fairy fired. Cool. Uh, I'm <laughs> rolling a whole bunch because of things. Uh, that's a 14 to hit one of them. Uh, 14 does hit. And that's a 13 to hit the other. Uh, and 13 <laughs> does hit as well. Okay, cool. So the first one takes uh, 10 points of damage. Okay, yeah. Um, first one, you you collapse his ribcage and he crumples to Cool. Uh, and the other takes uh, 14 points of damage. Yeah, similar results. These guys aren't armored at all. And they're like running up and you're just like like just burying your hammer in their heads, their chests, and they're actually... Yeah, there's, there's a lot of bone country and viscera. Yeah, happening. they're actually starting to not want to get near you um, with the burning and the crushing. Uh, so yeah. They're not liking what you're doing to them. Um, okay. Uh, Elry. Um... Give me, give me a perception check as you're like running uh, towards the the captain in the back. Eleven plus four, fifteen. Fifteen. Um, okay. Yeah, you are. You're like running towards the back, and the Don Rose is kind of circling behind this ship. Um. And like you, like you see something behind the dawn rose you see like a shimmer of of something and all of a sudden another ship comes into focus and it is moving up and behind the dawn rose it's 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 got a uh it's kind of got a, a, a like a like kind of a bird's posture almost like a like a a, a, a bird of prey and it is moving in um up behind the Dawn Rose silently. It's about maybe a third the size of the Dawn Rose itself. Um, but yes. That is what you see as it kind of shimmers out of nowhere um, and is moving up. Uh, how far away... We're in short-range combat now between the two, the Dawn Rose and the Harlequin, Harlequin's Embrace. What's the range on that? Uh, I mean, you're you're within. Are you are you? Uh, what do you want to do? Like a message or? Uh, yeah. Am I within 120? Uh, of of someone on the deck of the Don Rose? Or, yeah. Y yes, you could hit. You could hit. Uh, you see. You see both Lorne and Templeton Ledbetter like yelling out to the ballista crew to reload. Um, but uh, from where the ship is, like the rear crew, they're like swiveling around, like trying to get the ballista pointed. No one is really manning the rear catapult because you can't use it right now. So no one is technically looking directly behind the ship. Um, 
but you do, uh, but yes, there are multiple people that are within range of your stuff. Okay, so Elry's going to break ranks through the people as soon as he sees this, skid to a halt, kind of lean out as far as he can over the, the banister actually out into space off of the Harlequin's embrace. He's gonna flip the copper wire up into his mouth as he points at Ledbetter and says, behind you, buddy. And he like snaps around and looks um, and he sees this, like he sees it. He's like, what the hell? Fucking dragonborn, damn it. And you know, like you hear him say that. And he's like, he doesn't like really bother to, res like he's responding. So the first 25 words come back to you of you hear him say, Dragonborn, damn it, damn it, turn around, we might be bored and so And that's, it kind of cuts off at the end of the spell. But that's what you okay. get in back. And that's my action for my round, right? To send the uh, message to him. Well, yeah, him that's your action. Uh, you still have your bonus and the rest of your move. Uh, the bonus is I am going to move as close as I can to the casters, and then I'm going to hide. Okay. Um, where are you uh, attempting to hide? Um, I only need to have a uh, creature that's bigger than me to hide behind. So um, anybody, a sailor, you know, just line of sight, not in melee. Uh, just if I can slip behind a, a one of the ballista, one of the anything I can think of, you know, even the railing itself, if I can. Okay. Yeah, I mean. He's just getting close again. Okay, yeah. Uh, Cole, he you know, landed near, near midship. So you, uh, you think you can like move close enough to him to kind of not be seen. I mean, he has a much larger target than you are. Um, yeah. So he, he does that whole like classroom thing where you're running down the hall and you walk by the door and you run down the hall. Mm -hmm. He just runs up to call and then just walks behind him. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you're, you're doing that. Give me your height. 26. Okay. Uh, so you, you hide there next is Actually, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm sorry. Um, we can say that kind of the we can say the message happened. I'm sorry because I just did that on on the Dragonborn's turn, right? So we're like mid round. I'm sorry I got caught up in that. So we'll oh, say, my bad, my bad. No, no, no. Was... Well, I'll, I'll let the message fly because that's that's dramatically appropriate. Um, but the pirates, it is now their turn. So, um, Elry, you were you were you were still kind of like out in the open. Um, Dakul, you have uh, you have this guy right on top of you, and the two casters. Um, first off, they they both uh, start pivoting to the side away from uh, from Hilda's spell, um, and so the caster uh, the the cleric moves further back into the uh, the quarter, the captain's quarters, to get away from it. Um, and the captain himself swings around on the other side of you, the cool. The mage moves further to, to his side of the ship away from Hilda. Um, so there's that. E, you are going to get uh, a bunch of bolts at, fired at you uh, from, from range. The guys in the front now, the front catapult, they have pulled out weapons. Uh, but none of them can hit the broadside of a warforged. Uh, you, you, know, you do get hit uh, twice for 10 damage. Uh, the cool. And the cast, the wizard himself, uh, he says some arcane words and stretches out like three fingers at the end. And you see fire lit down all three fingers and then swoop, swoop out and back in towards you as he casts Scorching Ray um, at you. Okay. Uh, what's your AC again right now? It's 21 now. Nice. 21. Yep. Two of the two of them still manage to hit you, so you take uh, six and four. So that's ten fire damage as two of these scorching rays still manage to to uh, find purchase. Um, you you see the cleric as he's backing up cast a spell um, on Harkin, um, and you see some of the 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 burn the radiant burns on his face clear up uh, a little bit. Um, looks like they maybe healed him and you can tell like the cleric is pretty pretty beaten up um it, it did not like being in that that spiritual guardians uh but he he casts a healing spell on him on harkin and harkin himself uh goes 
goes to work on you, Dakul, with his rapier. Okay. Um, I got a 16 and a 25. Uh, so that's going to be six more damage from his rapier. Um, there's that. E4-4 shot. Uh, more ballista crew are going to shoot at the Don Rose. Um, yep. And one more bolt slams into the Dawn Rose in its side on its side. Um, it's, it's now taken about five or six shots. Um, taking taking a little bit of damage, actually. Um, and then Dawn Rose retaliates. So Cole, he comes up uh, E four four, and um, yeah, he he comes up. He's got his like brass knuckles on and he just goes to town on this one guy uh, beating him to a pulp all the while just like screaming bloody murder and like let's kill him eh? let's kill him all and he's just like pounding this thing this guy down into a pulp into the ground Xander himself um, is going to cast a spell at um, where should find Xander card there he is Xander is going to cast a spell um at the front of the ship towards the catapult and those guys. He moves over and takes a deep breath in and exhales and pushes his hands forward and a flamethrower erupts basically from his hands. And he manages to catch a couple of the guys in the fire. And But more, more importantly, he starts catching the catapult on fire. Um, one of the guys uh, who was helping load the catapult uh, succumbs to the flames. Um, the other managed to hop out of the way before they fully perish. Um, and then the Dawn Rose retaliates. Uh, they start moving people towards the back of the ship. You see uh, Ledbetter yelling for, for orders to move up and the guys at the back who are firing the ballista to turn and look. And you see them like turn. They're not gonna be able to crank the, the, the ballista around towards the ship. Uh, but they do like pull out like crossbows and start firing at this at this ship uh, at the rear of the Don Rose, um, and so that that is what that happens, and we are back to the top of the initiative. Hmm. I would just do what I did. Okay, so you're gonna you can move up and get within range of the 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 mage if you want. Okay, to yeah, but. We're, we're, we're saying, though, that what I did now with the message and everything occurred during my turn, correct? No, uh, it, it's it's an extra little action, but it's just a message. It's fine. So it's your turn. Okay. I'm okay. just saying the, the movement okay. and the hiding was nullified, and you were still out in the open. So. Oh, okay. Cool. Okay, so I could decide I have, like, a full bevy of a whole yep. suite of actions for me here? Yep. Okay, well, then, he's going to move into the... Um, I don't like the priest. Can I get into the priest? No, the priest. Remember, the priest backed in back into the captain's cabin. Cabin. Oh, okay, and, okay. And so now Harkin is near the front, and the wizard has moved kind of starboard to that to that staircase away from Hilda, um, as as he, as the the captain and Dakul are engaged in combat. As Dakul's kind of like right in the edge of Hilda's spirit guardians. Okay, so if I go into the wizard, I'm not going to be going into the spirit guardians. I'm going to be just no, outside of it, correct? Yeah, no, you're further okay. away than, than even the cool and the captain are. Okay, let's take him out then. Uh, uh, he's going to go right into the wizard and attack with the rapier. Okay. That's a nat one, but as a halfling, I get to re-roll those. Yep, that's the great thing about halflings. That, uh, 15... Uh, 15 uh, on the wizard uh, you you're like you got up there and you're like kind of stumbled on the way in but you put the rapier forward and you're like yes I got him I got an opening and he waves a hand and blue light swirls around him from from toe to head and right as your rapier is reaching his side deflects off a magical shield that he, he brings up at the last second oh I've got that one too um, while I'm in there with him, um, I'm going to stay engaged with him. 
I am not going to disengage. So with the bonus action, I am going to cock the pistol. Gotcha. So bonus action, you cock the pistol. Uh, next up is Hilda. All right, with Elry up there, can Hilda arrange herself so that they're still get closer and still have as many people as possible in the Spirit Guardians, but not have Elry there? Uh, you would be able to move like down the stairs and move over uh, because Dakul is already like okay, right? The cool is fine because I could see him. Right. Um, so you can move where you can catch Haskell and you could catch the cleric again. Like move okay. down and closer, but you would not be able to catch the wizard because of where Elwood is. That's okay. Um, so I'm going to move there and I am going to do that. They need to have, make a DC 14 wisdom save. Okay. Um, How much damage? Only 16 this time. Shit. Okay, so <clears throat> with that, the cleric drops in the back. Oh, what a weakling cleric. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay, and then uh, Haskell, uh, he's still standing. Um, okay. Um, if he's still standing, then the spiritual weapon will go and take a little on him. Okay. Uh, no, it won't. Uh, that was an eight. Um, but... Just to I, knock it away. Yeah, but I still haven't taken my action yet. So, um, I'm going to cast a Guiding Bolt at Haskell. Um, so I need to make a ranged spell attack. And that's a what, 16 plus a six. So 22 to hit. Uh, 22 to hit? Yes. Okay. Um, well, that's Metagaming. He, uh, as your bolt comes in, you see him, like, mutter a word and, like, flick his hand and a ring on his finger, like, flares up. And you see that same blue energy from the wizard, like, swirl up around him. Mm-hmm. But it, your bolt still manages to hit him. Excellent. All right. That's 4d6 damage. So just need just a second. And we're all great. Uh, 13 damage, but the next attack roll made against this target before the end of my next turn has advantage because he is glittering in mystical light. Yeah, as, as your, your guiding bolt, uh, which, I, I mean, does it just look like a hammer flying at people? Uh, let's, like? let's mix it up. It looks, um, it looks more like a chisel or a gouge. Something okay. like that. Yeah, it comes flying at him and it bores its way through the shield that he cast and like, actually, strikes him in the chest. Actually, it looks like a crazy bellows. Those are fun. Crazy bellows? Okay. It's like bellows and it just. Pfft. Okay. Yeah. Yes. So it, it hits him and like you know, just light and steam come flying off of him. Um, and he is and he is lit up for the next person, uh, which is Daku. Okay, yes. All right, so the one of the clerics is down and there is nothing but Haskell and the wizard that is left, correct? Yes. All right. Uh, I am not sure if if Haskell is receiving his power from the remaining wizard or not. I am still currently engaged with Haskell, correct? Yes. Uh, uh, how far away is the wizard from me? Uh, he's a further, like... 15 feet over. Uh, and Elry's on him right now. And Elry's on top of him now. Yep. Uh, I think, and I am not 100% certain that this is where Haskell is getting his power from, but it is a worthy enough attempt to go for the wizards. Is, uh, would I spend a turn disengaging with Haskell? How does that work? Well, uh, with with Step of the Wind, you could disengage as a bonus action. Normally, sure. other than that, you'd have to disengage as an action. Yeah, so I'm already I'm already in uh, it with, with, with Haskell. Yeah, I mean you're you're elbow deep with Haskell right now. Okay, then uh, well, I'm, I, I picked the fight, so I'm gonna stay with the fight. Uh, 
All right, then, then, then Daku is going to go full, full blown offensive. Okay. Uh, he's he's going to start off um, with a, with an unarmed strike because it's such it's such close tight quarters. Okay. Uh, it, it, it's no need to bring out the blade when you watch. Twenty-two. Twenty-two just hits. Ah, as yes. Can, yeah, as you can see, the uh, that blue energy is still around him for the moment as it's still lingering. So yes, it just hits him. Nice. Five, six, eleven. Uh, and uh, I want to continue uh, attacking. Uh, so I hit, I hit him with the unarmed strike first, and then uh, now I'm going to grab my sword once once I finish my unarmed attack because I see that he's open. So let's keep business moving. Okay. And how much did you do? How much damage did you do with that first one? Eleven. Okay. Cool. Just want to make sure. And this next roll is seventeen. And it is twenty-five. Yeah, that's a definite hit. And that. Eight. It's gonna be eight. Yes. Okay. Eight more damage. Okay. Yes. Uh, and then I want to use a uh, a, a key point for a uh, flurry of blows. Okay. So two more unarmed strikes. So go ahead and give the give me those. Haha. Right. <laughs> Fourteen and, and uh, eight is twenty-two again. Man, that'll work. And. Oh, let me roll damage for that one. Six, seven, eight, nine, four is nine. So the first one is nine damage. Okay. And the second unarmed. Ah, oh, fail, critical one. That, that didn't lose. Okay, yeah, that last one, he like pops the uh, rapier on your wrist and you kind of like hits a pressure point. Um, as you got a little overzealous. Okay. And so um, that is, unless you want to move away. Yeah, yeah because that was, that was an attack plus an unarmed plus my key point with the two unarmed. So I still got one more attack, right? No, no, you did your two attacks and you did your two unarmed strikes. So okay. That's your, that's your four attacks. All right. Okay. Um, and you still have your plus two to AC. So yes. E404. Um, so uh, you still have um, the guys at the front catapult, they all, like, have drawn weapons. One of, Remember, one of them perished from, from Xander as he's, like, holding this, uh, this jet of flame. Um, or, you know, it burst out from him. Um, you still have, like... You can move and engage. Like, the, the nearest clump of enemies that you can engage, there's three of them over to one side uh, that were firing at range, and then there's the three at the front of the ship. Uh, that you can find. Or, um, to I... There. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, now that I'm level 5, I'm also faster, so... Okay. <laughs> I got 40 feet of movement, so um, I'm gonna go after the people who were close to the catapult, or the ballistas, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah. Recalculating. New danger. Incoming. And goes and tries to attack them, so uh, as soon as I get into range, uh, activating the aura to get as many of them as possible. Okay. Um, then let's do this. Uh, that's 13 to hit. Mm -hmm. And that's a 18 to hit. So the first guy got um, first guy got um, 11 points of damage, and the other guy also got 11 points of damage. Okay. Um, so yeah, those two guys uh, has been the chorus of E, which is just... Kong, kong, kong. Burn, then hammer. Yeah. yeah, just burn and then hammer, and these guys are just like falling like wheat before the, the, the site. You know, I mean, it, these are just pirates, and uh, you are pouring, you are just tearing through them. Um, it's just, there's a lot of them on the ship. <laughs> and um, so anyway, 
E, you drop two more guys. Um, okay, so anyone who... Uh, Elry, you are over on the side of the ship where you can see, like, the Dawn Rose, like, moving by, and this ship is right on its tail. Like, this other ship, this Dragonborn ship. And you see, like, the, the, the front of the, the ship, like, the cockpit of it, like, the nose of it kind of open up. And you see a dragonborn, like, it's the, it is the one from the auction, without a doubt. Um, and he, like, runs and jumps, uh, smashing through, like, the back glass of the Dawn Rose, like that rose mural, and s goes right through it, and you hear glass shatter in, and another dragonborn follows him in. And they, they board the ship, and the ship itself after they jump off, you see it kind of dip down and below the Dawn Rose, so that the guys shooting, uh, they they don't have a clear shot from it on it, because it is kind of using the ship itself as cover. Um, but that is what you see. Don't worry. Uh, on to the pirates. The pirates themselves. Um, so, you see Haskell Harkin, uh, kind of shift a little bit and he mutters an arcane word and like you see that ring again flare up with a different color energy this time like more of a white energy and cast out um, he is going to cast uh, Thunder Wave so I'm going to need y'all to uh, make a I believe it is a constitution save is that all of us? Uh, no, no, no. Just, just uh, Dakul and Hilda, because y'all are, are within the, the twenty foot uh, cube. Ooh, twenty-two. <laughs> twenty-two. Hilda. Twenty-two as well. Damn. Okay. Uh, well, in that case, you uh, you only take half damage on the actual uh, thunder damage. So y'all take eight damage from that and you are not pushed back. Um, and so he kind of mutters a curse under his, under his breath uh, at that. And um, he is going to uh, basically like, yell out, it's like, ah going to be like this is it and he's going to run back into the captain's cabin and that means that uh Dekul, you're in melee with him so you get an attack of opportunity um wait, wait. E, or uh, uh hilda were you also in melee with him um i don't think i was able to get in melee with him i think he's in That's the right. range it does this the spiritual weapon get an a out no, no, no. I would say that if you had Warcaster, I would allow you to make a, uh, a spiritual weapon attack since that's kind of a spell. But mm -hmm. yeah, maybe that's oh. a good reason to take that feat. You never know. Um, but he's going to run back into his cabin. Um, so, uh, Dakul, you can go ahead and make uh, either sword or unarmed, uh, just one at one melee attack. It's just one, it was one melee attack? Yep, as he's uh, an attack of opportunity. All right, but I roll with advantage, right? Because of the attack of opportunity, or or, or or am I overstepping my bounds right now? No, um, technically, well, technically, your first attack should have been an advantage, but you hit him anyway um, because of the guiding bolt. But no, I mean, it's just you get an attack. That's that's the thing. Since he did not disengage, okay, you get an attack on him. Got gotcha. you. Uh, well, eight and fifteen is twenty two, twenty three. 23? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that is uh, that is definitely a hit. All right, so let me do my D8. Uh, five and two is seven. Seven. Seven, okay. So yes, you, you see him uh, bolt through the door, stepping over the fallen body of his, of his priest, uh, and he moves back into his cabin, kind of around the corner and just out of sight. Um, and so that's, that is what you see. 
Okay, um, just just uh, so I can know, just for reference, uh, the other wizard is behind me, right? Like, am I in the am I in the doorway of him going back into his his little yeah, hovel? Yeah, you're just outside the doorway, going back to the captain's caverns, you know, the or quarters, the stairs going up uh, above that on the the on the poop deck, or on either side of you. The wizard is right in front of the stairs, off to your left, with Elry engaged with him. Uh, and about 10 feet in front of you is the body of the priest. And he's, like I said, he's moved a little bit further in and kind of off to the right. Okay. Um, and so with that, um, E, you're going to, uh, more crossbows uh, plunk into you. Um, yeah, you're going to take 10 more damage from crossbows. Uh, just clunk, clunk. Um, as these guys are trying to stay away from you, but it's getting increasingly hard to move around because uh, also Cull is up here, just smashing people. So there's not a lot. Um, you still you hear them calling for like, get up here, get up here, we're being taken. Um, and that's the end of that. The Dawn Rose itself, um, not as much firing from the Dawn Rose as as uh, Templeton has seen them burst into the the actual like rear of the ship and now he's like yelling for people to to run you know into the kind of the the little like meeting area in the back where y'all y'all's navigation room and they're like hammering against the door like trying to get in there but it looks like maybe the door was barred from the inside um and so that is where that is although one of the ballista fires again and to no avail it it, it bounces off the, the the ship and does and does no damage um cull he continues uh assailing sailors um and and xander uh lets loose a bolt of flame uh setting the uh catapult further on fire uh, the, the catapult is is like wholly like burning right now. Like the front of the ship is starting to catch catch flame, and you can smell like strong smoke uh, is filling this this the air bubble here. Um, and so now we are back around to the top of the initiative. Uh, oh. I will. I will be a fantastic player and let you know, Pruitt, that the mage did not do anything. Oh my God! Yes, I'm. Thank you. I'm glad you're such a great player. So the mage, uh, he turns on on you, and you see him reach a hand out. Uh, what's your AC? Uh, it can be. It starts at sixteen. Okay. Um. So I got a twenty-one to hit. Well, shit. Okay. So, yeah, you hit. Okay. So he reaches out, and you see electricity arcing between his fingers. And you take uh, you take six electricity damage as he kind of just reaches out and zaps you, and you're like, ah! and before you can, you know, react, he backs up the stairs. Um, and that's... And Oh wait, he backs up the stairs? I get an attack of opportunity against him, don't I? If he tries to... Uh, no, not with Shocking Grasp. It, uh, shocking Grasp, the, uh, the secondary effect is that you cannot take reactions until you're next. Ah, I did not know that. I will use also use uh, Uncanny Dodge on that to reduce it to three, if that is... Okay. okay. Yeah, That's an attack like, roll. So. Yeah, the electricity starts to arc to you and you feel the damage and you kind of, you instinctively like pull away from it and so you don't take the brunt of it, but you still are shot. And so it's like, ah! Son uh, of a bitch! Okay, and he backs up the stairs and onto the onto the rear uh, the aft, uh, of the ship. So now it is top of the initiative. Thank you. Okay, uh, so what Elry is going to do now is he is going to. So he's out of range from me, correct? Yes. And you did see, uh, you know, kind of looking around. There's a lot going on, but you might have glanced that Harkin like ran in uh, to the rear of the, the, the cap of the ship. Okay. Uh, okay. I got a question for you. Yes, sir. Got a question for you. You said that there was currently being 
uh, uh, there was a ballista that was almost loaded that did not fire because E tore into the crew, correct? They were oh. in the process of cranking it and the crankers got killed. The catapults, they have, a, they have one fore and one aft catapult you don't see any ballista on the deck you have seen the ballista okay. coming from they're, they're from level mid. down yeah. right yeah yeah one deck down but not as many are firing off uh now because you've seen more people flood up on deck and call and e are pretty much holding off all the sailors that are coming up out of the guts of this ship um Okay, but there is an armed catapult that was just abandoned because yes, he destroyed everything. You just need to um, well, release here's, it. Here's the problem: it is pointed right now just into space. You would have to move it and then fire it. Uh, is it pointed above the Don Rose? Um, it is. Like, did the Dawn Rose kind of creep below the, the horizon line and... It's in the general direction of the Dawn Rose, yes, I would say that. But the Dawn Rose is pretty close, so it, you know, it might go over it. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm willing to go over it. It's going to enter the air bubble of the Dawn Rose, correct? It should, you think. Uh, Elry looks at everybody and says, Get that gun from him! And he runs gets onto the carriage of the catapult, takes his dagger and cuts the line and fires himself back towards the Don Rose. Okay. Okay. Uh, so you run up there. Uh, go ahead and give me an attack roll at uh, plus five. That's a 24. A 24. Okay. So you manage to fire yourself and you catch the rear sail of the Dawn Rose. Like, like, I mean, this is like straight out of an action movie where you're flying over and you grab the sail and the sail itself like bends over almost right to the deck and you can like let go of it and hop down on the back deck of the Dawn Rose like a boss. Okay, uh, if I am going to go boss this far, I'd like to go the full baller. And since I'm at the rear, can I go beyond the deck down towards where the glass is from the rear entry that they just had? Give me an acrobatic the... roll. <laughs> Thanks, Prax. For the cheers. That is a... 19. 19? Okay. So you... Again, you grab the edge of the sail, it bends and you could let go and hop down, but it, you, you take your momentum and it swings you just over the lip of the, of the railing of the ship and you like let go in a flourish and you manage to land right inside and pop up. And as you pop up, you see one of the dragonborn holding like against the door, like holding like against it as, as, as the crew is like hammering on it. And the other dragonborn steps out of the captain's quarters. He's got a spear in one hand. Um, he's not wearing armor. It's more like a like a mesh netting. And like I said, like I described these guys last time, they have like small like birds of prey and like mit, like fanged like skulls like around their waist. And he's got like a this this flat mask on. You can't really see his face. His hair sticking out behind it. He's got a wrist blade coming off of the hand holding the spear. And in his other hand, he's got Hamilton shoving him into a bag. Um, and he looks right at Elry and he's like, you might want to just get out of the way. And that's where we're gonna leave off. As it is 10 minutes until nine, we are in the thick of it. Haskell has disappeared into the back of the ship. Elry is standing mano a mano against this immense dragonborn. There are two of them in the room with him, and it appears that Hamster is back on the menu, boys and girls. And so uh, that's where we're going to leave off. And let's go around to cast and crew. Tell me how you liked it. Tell me your thoughts. Tell me your, your, your feels. I want to know and where we can find you on the interwebs in general. Uh, we're going like we always do. Let's go reverse order. Uh, so that's going to be Emma starting us off. 
Pruitt, you're trying to take my baby away. What are you doing? What are you know. doing? You know. broke my heart. Uh, Finally it, got. It, it depends on what you think is probably happening here. I mean, you did piss off a mob boss. I mean, you know. I guess we did, but Pruitt, you're, yeah. but this is personal now. It is, it is personal. You and me. First she, had, first she had Hellion, and now Hamilton is uh, in the crosshairs of danger. I thought we were friends. I, I guess oh, you. No. I guess you were wrong. <laughs> <laughs> of course, we're friends. <laughs> that was an amazing session. I just looked down two minutes ago and realized what time it was. I completely lost track of it. Got completely into it. Yeah, me too, guys. <laughs> aren't clerics just the fucking best? They are. They're like one of the best classes that you could possibly play because they can th- kick ass more more than some fighters. And by the way, they can also heal. Mm-hmm. And I didn't even get hit, but my AC is 21 right now. It's, it's amazing. Um, I love it. I love this game. It was so much fun. That was a tense fight. You did a good job. It is sometimes hard to have a tense fight in fifth edition, I think. And you are very good at that, Pruitt. Thanks. I'm enjoying it. Um, I am Emma Lambert. I am the communications director for WebDM. You can see me on my Twitter, SusieKing85. If you talk to WebDM, you will either get our amazing intern, Matt, or me, um, WebDM Show, or on Facebook. Um, I am running my first stream game as part of Women in Tabletop Gaming Month. It is a charity stream for the Girls Empowerment Network, a local central Texas nonprofit that helps girls figure out what they want to do with their life and talk to them about things that matter. Um, That is the cast you see up on your screen. As you can see, there is me in the middle. There is somebody you might know called Satine Phoenix. Maybe you've heard of her. Uh, Maybe. Amazing. Lise Chen. Uh, one of the writers of one of the the new Under Mountain book that Wizards is coming out with. My best friend in the world, Autumn Umfris. If you have seen our live games, Curse of Razzle Sin that we did a million years ago, she's in them and she's incredible. And one, Sid Shields, who's in Iceland right now. Um, mm-hmm. But she's on Encounter RP. She's incredible. I cannot believe this game. It's going to be amazing. We're going to raise money for an amazing thing. And let's hear it for Women in Tabletop. Yay! I hope you all show up June 24th, uh, 1 p.m. CST. Awesome. Yeah. It's a great cause. I cannot wait. Uh, cannot wait for that. You're going to be awesome. I, you, you, people are going to shit their pants whenever you drop the concept on them. Um, yep. Anyway, next up we have Trey Murphy. How are you doing, sir? sir. Ah, damn. <laughs> Why, bro? Why? Why you got to do us like this? You got wow. my brain going all over the place. It's like, uh-huh. uh, I'm, I'm trying to think like chess, but all I keep playing is checkers. So I'm looking right. at my teammates like, huh? <laughs> no, 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 for real, for real. I think... I think we could we could piecemeal some kind of way to kind of like battle back and figure out some things. I mean, we are like in the real nitty gritty of it, like for real, for real. Like it's going to be some tough decisions that are going to have to be made. And I feel like some L's or this way, however you want to do it, might be getting handed out. So, wow, next week is going to be absolutely crazy man I, I i don't know exactly how we're gonna go about it but i do know that we're not gonna leave any soldiers behind i know that you know we're, <laughs> we're on some three musketeers one for all and all for one. Oh, so in case you don't know my name is uh trey murphy and i played the cool the the half drought uh monk elf and um you can reach me on the twitter sphere look at the kitty pretty kitty hey there pretty kitty okay anyways you can reach me on the twitter sphere at uh at Sintel. And on Instagram as well. And I am a huge proponent of storytelling and kids. I'm all about girl power. And there are a lot of awesome girls in the kids that we teach with Lights, Camera, Discover. And the storytelling process, if you feel like being friendly, please go to Lights, Camera, Discover. Uh, dot com and just check out what we are about, man. It's all about the kids. And um, as I can tell, Prue, you weren't a really nice kid, man, because you're not being really nice to us right now. But. That's where I will take it out on them. I'm just no, happy. I'm not. To and I was I was requested uh, by the DM mod to do this. 
<laughs> and now, Miss Kiana, I believe you are wondering why I've brought you here this evening. Please introduce yourself. Tell us how you feel about the game. You're awful. <laughs> No, uh, I loved it as always. Holy shit, that fight. My God. Um, even with Bane, my dice were blessed this evening and I was just killing things left and right. And I am very pleased with myself. I'm probably a little too pleased with myself. Man, maybe I should be worried about that. But you know what? It was great. E was kicking ass. Uh, we also got a little snippet of E backstory. So that's got. I don't know. Oh man, I'm I'm so excited. I'm a little afraid, but super, super excited. Um, but yeah, uh, you guys can find me until next Tuesday over on the internet, uh, all over the place. I do a whole bunch of things. What is time? I don't know. Uh, I am over on Twitter at Kiana S, uh, where I, that's pretty much where you can find everything that I do. Uh, but I'll highlight a couple of things. I'm on podcast called Lady Slaying Dragons, which is me, two cool ladies talking about all things tabletop. Releases new episodes every Sunday. On Mondays, I'm over on Account of Roleplay playing Call of Cthulhu in the afternoon with Greg as my keeper trying to kill me as always. Uh, <laughs> on Wednesdays, I'm over on Stratacus' channel DMing uh, One Shot Wonders, which is me going through uh, a whole bunch of one shots with all sorts of people, uh, new setting every month. We are starting Ravenloft tomorrow, and I'm so excited to do gothic horror and just get into the nitty gritty and get real dark. It's going to be fun, guys. Um, I'm also kind of all over the place in terms of off the table. Uh, I am kind of guesting in a whole bunch of games over there. And for Women in Tabletop Gaming Month, uh, a week before Emma's fun game, I am running my first Call of Cthulhu game as a keeper. It's going to be super fun. So that's uh, so check that out over with the RPG Lab. Uh, but yeah, can't wait to go back into it on Tuesday and do something with this fight. I don't know. Win it, run away. I don't know if he's going to run away. It's great. It's going to be fine. We're going to be great. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Who, who, who knows? <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yes. <laughs> ha like <laughs> hashtag free Hamilton. So yes, uh, G Greg, I went kind of out of order. I'm sorry, but I wanted to put you last considering the predicament that you are now in. You are standing in the path of two dragonborn, one of which is trying to take Hamilton. You got some decisions to make my friend. Oh, I'm not worried about this because one, I don't care. Elry does not care about the hamster at all. So the worst possible person to stop and negotiate for the hamster's life is now in charge of it. So if this is a, oh, by all means, it's going to be a, a very easy decision. I couldn't stop them. You know, I mean, there's who's going to argue with that? There were two dragonborn. Um, I love this game. And I have got to say this, that there was some cool, dope ass parts tonight. And Emma tore shit up. That spiritual guardians with the forge and all the race, that was one of the coolest, dopest things that I have played in D&D &D in a long time. Just that imagery of it coming around. And then E4 of four just decimating motherfucker. I mean, just... Boom, boom, two deaths. Boom, boom, every round. They were just laying waste. At some point, there has got to be, and this is a mechanic that has got to be put into fifth edition. I know there's an optional rule or whatever. When you see your compatriots as a bad guy getting leveled by somebody that is unstoppable, there has yeah. got to be a wisdom save at some point before you're like, I got to get out of here. I got to yeah. bribe. I'm breaking ranks. I am jumping all overboard. I don't want to die. Because, yep. I mean, that is death incarnate coming at you in a six and a half foot tall robot that is on fire. I mean, I'm, I'm going to kill myself before I let E404 kill me. But that's just me. Anyway, Grimjack21502 on the Twitches and the Twitters. You can find me all over the goddamn internet. Uh, tomorrow you can find me on uh, Encounter Roleplay as Laugh Love Lindy is going to be our keeper for the one to four Call of Cthulhu section. And I believe we're going to do a special trip back in time a bit. Uh, maybe some old faces will appear. It's going to be fun. Uh, Friday, you can find me on my channel, Grimjack21502. Doing a little Firefly RPG action from 2 to 4 Eastern. You can find me on Saturday from 6 to 9 on uh, Wizards of the Coast. We're back for some learn by play. And then on Sunday, it is the premiere of my Ode to All Things Pulpy as Pulp Cthulhu's Project Athena starts its season three 
uh, and we will begin that from seven to nine. Uh, also, like uh, Kiana said, Atomic Cthulhu, but we'll be back here next Tuesday to see just how the negotiations go. And also starting this month on my channel, Conan, Age Undreamed of, Emma's a part of that. Uh, that'll be starting at the end of the month. And then we also have another Pulp Cthulhu show starting Project Kronos. But guys, meet me back here. We're in space. I'm a halfling that just pulled off a baller catapult move. And now we'll see if I'm going to risk my life for a hamster. Spoiler <laughs> alert, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, definitely. Uh, I believe it was in what, second edition where they had morale, bo mor like morale? Is what you're uh, what you're thinking of there? Uh, yeah, I might yeah, actually. And it, so <laughs> I, after this session, I might actually start using morale because that was some somebody somebody in chat was like, "Oh, wait!" After I done another round of killing, uh, they were like, "Oh, where's the morale?" And someone said, "I think I got crushed in a ribcage." Yeah, <laughs> <It's> pretty, earlier, <laughs> pretty <much. laughs> like, yeah. "Yep." Uh, yes, in the in the great nerfing of fifth edition, um, but no, it's that's been gone for a few editions now. Um, anyway, yes, I cannot wait to come back and uh, pick this back up, uh, to see what happens because you know the dynamics of this uh, have shifted slightly to see what's going on with Haskell Harkin. Um, but yes, I'm excited. Uh, a few things before we get out of here. First thing, uh, I want to give a shout out to uh, Alexa Bonner who is provided the basis for all of this art. She pretty much pins everything. And then our producer, Brandon, uh, fills things in. So we got her information over here on the, we'll have it in the in the chat. That's uh, at Alexa underscore art on Twitter and Instagram. Uh, and like I mentioned, our producer, Brandon, the guy behind uh, hitting the numbers, uh, having us fly through space right now where you have the stars uh, out the back of the now shattered window of the Don Rose. Uh, but uh, yeah, that's at War Eagle Keep. Um, you can find him on Twitter. Uh, just want to say, uh, like always, if you're not following us, please follow us. Uh, we'll let you know when you know when we're uh, when we're playing. Uh, give us give us that that Amazon sub if you can. If not, you know, hit us next month maybe. Um, be sure to hit the uh, the the VODs uh, either here on Twitch. Uh, we'll get this up on WebDM Plays over on YouTube ASAP. Uh, and also, uh, remember we got Patreon, you have that web DM five days a week. Uh, and also last but not least is our sponsor tabletop loot. That's tabletoploot.com. Use the coupon code web DM 15. You can get 15% off of shirts, dice, and mugs. Um, and just use that, use it, get some dice, uh, support our sponsors and, uh, that in turn supports us. Uh, but, uh, as we always say, and until next week, may the dice ever roll in your favor.